Good evening, everybody. How are you all doing tonight? Uh, Crosadia, thank you for the host. Hope your runs were going good. What's up, Hawk? Twinkie, thank you for the host. Bane Reeker, thank you for the host. And Johnny Thunder, thank you for the 10 bits. Sneaky pocket change. Shisha, I still caught it. Thank you so much. What's up, Onyx? Yo, Lizard Danger. Lizard Danger, we're just getting started. Thank you for the subscription. The fresh Twitch Prime sub. Really appreciate that support. Thank you so very, very much. They weren't, but I had fun trying 10.2 star. Definitely going to try in the future. Yeah. It's definitely no easy task. Let's see. So I think... All my options and everything should be set. I'm going to be going through on hard difficulty. This is going to be a slow playthrough, reading all the notes, talking about the plot, um, you know, discussing it. This particular game also uh, noticed, you know, some people saying they haven't played this one or anything like that. Uh, it, it stands on its own pretty well within the other... Uh, within the context of the other Silent Hill games. It's its own thing. Uh, it does things a little bit differently uh, from the previous titles. Uh, some specific things, actually, a lot differently, um, considering the game did actually start off as a separate project. Um, not originally a Silent Hill title. Um, but it, it became a Silent Hill game very, very early on in its development, so... Um, obviously the story and everything is still very well done. There's a lot of references and connect always to the, some of the previous games, little mentions of Alessa, the, the cult plays a major role in this, um, including some influence from characters like Dahlia Gillespie, even though they're not featured in the game, uh, they've influenced things in the story. So it'll be fun to get into it. Uh, especially since a lot of the fan base is pretty divided on this one. Personally, I think this is uh, a pretty good game. I love the story. I love the majority of the characters except for the main character. And Gaming Hobo, thank you for the 50 bits. And Enigma, thank you for the host. But, um... I do have some complaints with the, the gameplay. Especially after a certain point. We'll get into it. As we go, though. So let's go. We're going to play on hard mode. Because why not? This game's hard, even on easy. I feel like this is one of the harder games in the series. Uh, enemies are very aggressive. There's a lot of opportunities where you can die and stuff. But again, I'm not going for a perfect playthrough or a speed run. So, it's fine. It was two years ago that Henry Townsend moved into room 302 of South Ashfield Heights, an apartment building in the medium-sized city of Ashfield. Henry was happy and enjoying his new life. But five days ago, something strange happened. He began to have a recurring dream each night. One other thing. He couldn't leave room 302. is when we examine anything, it doesn't matter what you examine, you can see the little eyeball icon that pops up there uh, when you're kind of like near certain things. It doesn't matter what you choose to examine. Uh, the several first bits of dialogue that uh, you're going to read will always be the same, regardless of what you look at. What's with this room? It's covered in blood and rust. This is my room, but what the hell has happened to it? 
This room, is it really my room? It's in terrible shape. The air is so heavy. My head hurts. There are all sorts of dusty items here. What the hell? None of it's mine. So, all of those first few segments of dialogue, like I said, no matter what you look at, uh, are going to be what you read. And then later on, we're actually going to find red notes uh, that are left behind by a character named Joseph Schreiber, and it is all of that exact same text, followed with the writing, uh, what the hell am I writing? <laughs> so we find out that this current character that we start as is actually Joseph Schreiber. And what we're seeing here, this is Henry's nightmare. This is going on uh, as part of Henry's nightmare. It's a nightmare sequence. Um, and Henry is sort of playing witness to Joseph Schreiber's last moments from his point of view. Uh, his apartment has become haunted, and this is just before Joseph Schreiber uh, dies. But now that we've gone through that initial bit of text, we can examine some of the other things in here. My head hurts. I don't remember putting up this photo. This church. So he somewhat recognizes the church, but he doesn't remember putting up the photo. So some of the things that we see in the room come from Henry's room in the future, technically, from when this would have actually taken place. But again, this is like a nightmare depiction of Joseph Schreiber's last moments. And Joseph is confused by things that are put up uh, by Henry, since this is supposed to be his room. So he's noticing all of these differences. That's weird. My red typewriter is gone. This photo. Was it here before? I've seen this lighthouse before. So later on we're going to examine this as Henry and find out that this lighthouse, that church, these are all photographs from Silent Hill. Uh, Henry Townsend himself is a photographer. And uh, he's been to Silent Hill. Uh, he's taken photos of places in Silent Hill. He didn't have anything weird happen to him there. Uh, as far as we know, it's nothing that's included or part of the story or narrative or anything. And Joseph is actually familiar with it. So he has also been to Silent Hill. So we're already starting to see like some of the connections between the characters. <laughs> Sorry for the pause there. I'm like stopping and reading chat. Voice is perfect for narration. Want to do audiobooks? See, I want to read. There's there's definitely been times, and I've talked about this a lot in the last two years that I've been streaming and stuff, but um, I wanted to like read books and things like that on stream, but uh, as far as I know, it's against stream rules unless it's something that's like, you know, uh, able to be read, public use, whatever. But I can't just read, like, whatever I want, Here, apparently. This. <laughs> Risen with the 200 bits. Thank you so much for the bits. Much appreciated. What's up, Maria, by the way? Twerking is a favorite game. It's still a pretty good one. Not my top game. I feel like out of all the Team Silent games, this one's the weakest. But I don't think it's a bad game. It's far from perfect. But I don't think it's bad. All sorts of dusty items here. Yep, read that. Read that. This is my bed. Okay. So the bed is his. The window, I can't get it open. Just 
Sherlock Holmes stories. But that's the thing is like, I mean, I don't want to read Sherlock Holmes stories. I want to read books that I want to read. I want to read Ryu Murakami's Coin Locker Babies. Uh, I want to read Stephen King's 1408. I want to read Silent Hill comic Here, books. Take this. And put, like, scans up. But that's definitely against the rules. Rodrigo. With 200 bits. Thank you so much. Appreciate the support. It's going to be a long night, by the way. This is a pretty long game. So, I'm already starting a little bit later than I had planned on, but... Uh, It's going to be a long night slash late morning. There's a lot to this game. These shoes, they're not even my size. So those are Henry's shoes. Door is shut for good. I like how there's not even edges anymore. It's just like there was a door here. It's gone now. It's part of the wall. Same for this one. There's at least a little more of an edge on that one. Yeah, see, that's the thing, is it's like kind of a gray area, Ash. And I don't want to... That would be a dumb and really stupid thing to get banned over, wouldn't it? It probably wouldn't happen, uh, and I'm probably overthinking it, but, you know. It would be just my luck, you know? It smells horrible. I'm afraid to open it up. Hey, what's up, ZPL? That's true. I could always just, like, send a message to Twitch and see what they say. <laughs> the Half-Life Half -Life Episode 3. Don't feel like washing my hands right now. Yoshio-kun, thank you for the host. I'm not interested in food at all. My head, it hurts. What is this photo? It's all faded, and I can't see it well. I thought I moved this, but now it's back where it was. So he mentions the desk being moved, but now it's back where it was. So this was moved away from the wall, but now it's back blocking the wall. As it is in Henry's apartment currently, but that'll change later. Uh, later. You know, there's some DMCA troll out there just waiting for someone to read a sentence of their book without permission. I mean, there's somebody out there willing to clip uh, a bit of your Tom Hewlett skit and re-upload it for less than 300 views on YouTube. So, I wouldn't have called that, but there it is. That is by far, like, one of the funniest and strangest things to come across, like, totally accidentally. Creepy. Looks like a face. This is a good one. This gives it a lot away. Who are all these people? 21 people. It can't be. Why are they here? So... The 21 people in this photo are supposed to be the 21 victims of Walter Sullivan should he complete the 21 sacraments ritual. And Joseph, who has been extensively researching, uh, researching Walter, uh, researching Walter Sullivan, 
uh, as well as the cult. And he sees this and immediately understands what this is. Who are all these people? But then he kind of realizes, 21 people, it can't be. Why are they here? So he kind of has that realization. There's a photo of Henry. Who is this guy? So it's definitely not Henry that we're playing as. We can tell that right now. It's just later on that we confirm that this is uh, Joseph. It's part of an old picture book. There once was a baby and a mother who were connected by a magical cord. But one day the cord was cut and the mother went to sleep. The baby was left all alone. But the baby made lots of friends at Wish House. And everyone was very nice to him. The baby was happy. It's ripped here and I can't read anymore. So we only know the first part of the story. This is a hint to the overall theme and the overall uh, history of Walter himself. So there once was a baby and a mother who were connected by a magical cord. This is... Walter connected to his mother um, before birth but one day the cord was cut and the mother went to sleep so this is where the story starts to detract from the truth that we'll find out eventually um, but we'll get more into the details of that later on the baby was left all alone abandoned but the baby made lots of friends at Wish House. So Wish House, we'll find later, is the orphanage that uh, the cult, it's the same cult from Silent Hill 1, Silent Hill 3, much the same way how there's kind of time in between each of the games. We don't necessarily know what order these games go in outside of Silent Hill 1 and Silent Hill 3. Like, we don't really know where Silent Hill 2 fits in necessarily. We don't really know quite where Silent Hill 4 fits in. We can kind of tell which ones happened after which ones based on certain events. We find, like, notes referencing finding Alessa in Walter's dream version of the Wish House later on. So um, we know that this is most likely after Silent Hill 1, of course. Um, there's references, like, with Frank Sunderland mentioning James uh, and having not seen his son, James Sunderland, the main character of Silent Hill 2, but... Um, it suggests that this takes place after Silent Hill 2 pretty greatly, but it doesn't necessarily confirm it either because we don't get a whole lot of detail into like what kind of relationship they had. Anyway, it winds up being kind of like a strange timeline and it's tough to really put a lot of these games in order outside of one and three. Uh, hey all, and Nub. What's up, Warp? Curiosity gets the better of me. Did anyone feel notice something? Harvey Storm? How is it? Heard it on the news here in Europe. So I'm in North Austin, uh, in Texas, which is pretty far from the coast. Like, it's central Texas. <clears throat> um, we got rain and wind. We were on the, kind of like the very edge of the storm system of the overall hurricane, so... Uh, it was bad enough, like, the wiring and stuff in my apartments is not great, so, um, typically when we get rain and, like, any kind of, like, more than a very light storm, my power will flicker on and off and stuff like that, and that was going on earlier. Uh, I was a little bit worried I might have to postpone the stream if stuff kept going out, um, but everything seems to have cleared up, you know, there's, it's not, like, a dangerous situation, there's not flooding or anything, my garage is on ground level and water never even came up past like the garage door. So it's all good where I am. It got pretty bad close to the coast, but uh, most of the people were able to be evacuated from those areas. Uh, the baby was happy. It's ripped here and I can't read anymore. So again little hints to 
Walter and kind of what began all of this. I don't even know what this is. He's not familiar with like a modern stereo somehow. This clock, when did it stop working? Did I even have a clock in this room before? So again, he's seeing Henry's possessions. Where did this big TV come from? I thought I had a record player here. So, I mean, he has like a record player and stuff. What's this? That's all he's got to say for that. And by the way, for those noticing, I'm, or wondering, I'm playing the uh, PC version. So I'm running this at uh, higher resolution, even though the base textures of the game, especially in the room, a lot of these textures... <laughs> oh, man. That's not going to get old. EJ20T, thank you for the six months in a row. Much appreciated. Thank you for the continued support. I was told there would be punch and pie. Uh, it's a punch in the face and a uh, mathematical symbol. So, yes. You're welcome to it. Catlink with the host. Thank you so very much. Welcome, everybody, coming over from Catlink's channel. You're just in time for Silent Hill 4. We're taking our time, crawling through the game, examining all the things. We're playing on hard mode. We got widescreen mods. We got 30 FPS cutscenes. They're normally 15 FPS in the PC version, so that's an improvement. There is a 60 FPS patch for this game, but it makes the final boss fight unbeatable, so I'm not using it because I want to finish the game. And for those of you who are willing to stick through this entire game, or for those of you who just show up at the very end, um, there will be something special to show at the end. Something very rare and unique indeed. A special ending to this game oh, man. that many people thought did not exist. What a dream. Face reveal. I've done that. You can follow my Twitter. I've even done streams with a cam, although very few. Yeah, there's an emote. Nub what? There's the face. So now, now we are Henry. We've woken up from the nightmare, and he's having a strange couple of days in this apartment. He's been trapped in here, in fact.
It's still not working. Using the Nemesis patch, I am. So a mysterious voice calling out, help me. Despite the fact that the cord for the phone is cut. Call cops. No good. Hey, Pablo. So this is... Downtown, South Ashfield. Nice view from our apartment. And we can see a character we're about to meet. Cynthia. Descending the stairs into the subway. So again, we got kind of a good view from the apartment. Low poly textures. AMTX, hey, yeah, we're just starting. Uh, Regulus, thank you for the host. MTX, thank you for the host. Support sleeping dogs. Thank you for the host. A lot of support. A lot of support tonight. Thank you guys so much. Don't worry, Ash. We will. We will. Just kind of checking things out for now. Going to be looking out the window a lot. Things change progressively as the game goes on. You can kind of spy in on your neighbors. They'll occasionally be doing different animations, different things. Sometimes it's actually relevant to what's going on, especially when you can see uh, certain apartments, people like Richard Braintree. We'll come to know him a little better later on. But let's go ahead and call Barth, Bar Southfield, 555 <gasps> That noise just now. What was that? Perfect timing, EJ. More support than a push-up bra. <laughs> Thank you for all that support. It lifts and separates. Thank you so much for the 10. Who gasped like that? Our neighbor Eileen. So, uh, of course, I don't know if everyone uh, caught when I was talking about this during some of my last streams, but uh, I've got all of my alerts customized to each game that I'm playing. So, like, when I was doing the story playthrough of Silent Hill 1, it's all Silent Hill 1 sound effects. Uh, for Silent Hill 2, it was all Silent Hill 2. For 3, it was all 3. And for this game, it's all sound effects and voice clips from this game. Don't feel like washing my face right now. Can't quite see. They leave the mirror just out of range where you can't really see it. And it's interesting. This is the first time in the Silent Hill series where you're playing sections of the game in first person. And 
would probably serve uh, as some sort of inspiration to Kojima when he was working on uh, PT. I can't imagine he wouldn't have overlooked this. I don't feel like taking a shower now. Because in a lot of ways, this game does set up a lot of its best scares and some really creepy, messed up hauntings as well. Some not so great, but some really good ones. Um, but your apartment kind of eventually winds up being one of the scarier parts of the game. There's nothing to do here. All right. That's a lot of work, man. Cheers. Thank you. Glad you guys enjoy it. Glad you appreciate it. Five days ago, that's when I first had the nightmare. I haven't been able to get out of my room since then. The phone doesn't work. The TV doesn't work. I can't even get anybody to hear me when I yell. My whole world has suddenly turned insane. My door's chained up. The windows are sealed shut. And on top of that, someone's chained the door from the inside. How am I going to get out of here? Don't go out. Walter. What the hell? What's going on here? That's Eileen Galvin from next door. changes before the party. So that's our neighbor Eileen. We'll definitely get uh, a lot more familiar with who, who she is and how she ties into all of this later on. Again, pretty much every character you encounter in this game has more to do with the main story and what's going on than the main character himself. He's just the unfortunate guy who happens to live in this apartment at this point in time. Like, sucks for him. Also, he's been to Silent Hill once and took pictures, but... <laughs> That's like it. Um, and there's a bunch of handprints. These visible handprints that we can see so far. And each of these handprints is representing... A victim of this game's antagonist, uh, Walter Sullivan. And as the game progresses, we'll see more and more handprints added. We get a lot of information through notes that happen to come through from under the door. Again, there seems to be some sort of just like in the previous games, the other world is kind of described in Silent Hill 2 as being this place where the borders of reality and unreality intersect. Within the walls of Henry's apartment, um, his reality is distinctly warped and crossing over with this unreality. And in this particular situation that unreality is Walter Sullivan's subconscious and memory uh, just the same way that in the first Silent Hill game the unreality could be defined as Alessa's nightmare in Silent Hill 2 the unreality could be described as James Angela and Eddie's subconsciouses uh, in Silent Hill 3 it's a combination of Heather's subconscious, Alessa's memory, and Claudia's nightmare. And now, everything that we see is relative to the antagonist, Walter Sullivan himself. About how long is the typical playthrough of Silent Hill 4 when I'm playing like this? Probably like 12 hours. 
we might speed it up a little bit if I feel myself like getting tired because I want to definitely do it all in one sitting. Um, but this game kind of requires, I feel, a lot more explanation than other games. Uh, uh, definitely more than the previous three. I feel like a lot gets explained outright in cutscenes and uh, actual voiced dialogue. You get a lot more information in Silent Hill 1, 2, and 3. In Silent Hill 4, it's like notes and like tiny little snippets of background lore. And it takes a lot more to kind of read through everything and explain its context. And um, yeah, it's it just takes a lot more involved uh, explanation, I feel, to kind of get all the points of this game across. There's chocolate milk here. Hell yeah, I'm going to take the chocolate milk. Chocolate flavored milk, very sweet. It was in the refrigerator at home. A speed run is a lot quicker. Yeah, if I'm speed running this game, I can I can run through this game and skip everything and uh, like skip cutscenes and just play the game as fast as possible and finish it in about an hour. But that's not the point of tonight. We're getting the wine bottle, which is our first weapon, actually. Bottle of white wine from the refrigerator. It'll break eventually if I keep using it as a weapon. And although it breaks, it is still usable. It just becomes a broken bottle. It loses... Uh, I forget what it loses. I think speed? But it gets damage? For being sharp? Don't really feel like cooking now. I don't know how you don't feel like cooking because your refrigerator's empty and you've been trapped in your apartment for five days. Don't feel like washing my hands. I've had this furniture since before I moved here two years ago. Notice it's up against the wall, and you can already kind of see there is like a... There's something back there. Yes, yeah, Sir Crabmeat. These games definitely deserve this uh, more attention, like... Um, especially the first four Silent Hill games, those are some of the best survival horror games, like, made. And there's an insane amount of detail when it comes to these games that, uh, often gets overlooked. So it's really, really just kind of nice going through, taking it slow, talking about all of these little tiny aspects that kind of build up to an overall... Uh, more layered, interesting story. I got this photo from Frank Sunderland. This is the first time that we see that name since Silent Hill 2. Uh, our protagonist, James Sunderland's father, is the super here at South Ashfield Heights. So South Ashfield Heights is the name of the apartment complex, or the apartment building here. And, uh... The city itself is Ashfield. We're in South Ashfield. Which... You might be wondering, why are we in South Ashfield? This game is called Silent Hill, not South Ashfield 4. Take a look at this photograph that Henry took. It's a photo of the lighthouse near the lake in Silent Hill. It feels a little bit lonely for a tourist town, but it's a nice place to relax and heal your soul. It's just a quick shot I took in downtown Silent Hill. It's a nice tourist town, about a half day's drive from here. So, 
Silent Hill is about a half day's drive, whatever that means. That can mean a lot of things. It depends on the distance and the speed that you're driving and all of that, but a half day, let's assume 12 hours worth of driving at an average, I don't know, 50, 60 miles per hour. It's not particularly close. It's pretty far. Especially when you consider that Silent Hill is in Maine. So you have to wonder... Ouch. Damn it. <laughs> Where the hell am I? Probes. Probes, thank you for the six months in a row. Appreciate the continued support. Much appreciated, my friend. But yeah, Silent Hill, it's it's not particularly close to to South Ashfield. If you're in Maine and you drive 12 hours north, half a day, you're in Canada. This chest could hold a lot of stuff. So... There are a lot of changes to this game. Again, this was started as a separate project. This was originally being developed as a side project by a few of the uh, non-core members of Team Silent while they were working on Silent Hill 3. Uh, and this was just kind of a side project that was inspired by Silent Hill called Room 302. Uh, because it, ha it, it started its life as this kind of distinct thing, even when they decided to change it over to uh, a Silent Hill title, which was pretty early on in the development, um, they wanted to keep things distinct and different from the previous three uh, Silent Hill games. So this is part of that. We have a limited inventory system now. This is something that we didn't have to worry about in Silent Hill 1 through 3. Uh, so now we actually have a limit. We have to return to the room in order to dump off inventory uh, because we can only pick up so many things at a time uh, while we're going through the rest of the game. Ouch! Damn it! <laughs> Catmech! Catmech, thank you for the six months in a row. Much appreciated. Thank you so much for the support. Welcome. But yeah, there's inventory management. The best. And there's a couple other key things that are missing. We're not going to get a radio, and we're not going to get a flashlight. What was that? What's up, little fat jiggles? Is this a first playthrough? This is a one millionth playthrough special. Uh, no, but I've played this game a absolute ton. More times than I can count. It's weird. A few days ago, the power to my TV and my VCR just stopped coming on. Ever since I started having those nightmares. Thank you, Lazoro. And now the news. In Washington... A gathering of 200,000 people appealing for stricter gun control laws in the wake of a spate of violent shootings throughout the country turned tragic when shots were fired into the crowd. Two people were killed and several wounded, including a three-year-old child. At this moment, no suspects have been found. Police are investigating the source of the shots. Oh my god. That's awful. Well, and that's like unrelated. <laughs> There's a lot of random things you can mess around with in the room. Some of them actually uh, are relevant to the story and kind of what's going on. And then there's just random like radio broadcasts, things like that. Got 
something stuck behind uh, the shelf here. Looks like a scrap from some book. Man, this thing looks like it was written ages ago. This game all first person. Nope, it is mostly third person. Only in this apartment room are we in this first person segment. Through the ritual of the Holy Assumption, he built a world. It exists in a space separate from the world of our Lord. More accurately, it is within, yet without, the Lord's world. So it's a little bit early to start going into this, just because this is pretty much the explanation of how everything is happening and what kind of what's going on in the game. Um, so through the ritual of Assumption, he built a world. We saw that there was already several handprints on the wall uh, outside signifying Walter's first several victims. Um, at this point, 15, I believe. Although the... So the Ritual of the Holy Assumption is the first half of an overall ritual known as the 21 Sacraments. And this is what allowed Walter to be dead and still exist as kind of like a spirit or ghost uh, and be able to affect things in the living world. And it's the explanation for how he's sort of doing all of this. So he's already performed this first half of the ritual, the ritual of the Holy Assumption. That's what those first several victims were for, the first ten. It exists in a space separate from the world of our Lord. More accurately, it is within yet without the Lord's world. So it is part of reality. It's made from Walter's memories of reality, but it is completely in control by him. So it's twisted and distorted versions of Walter's memories and rea of reality. Unlike the world of our Lord, normal reality, it is a world in extreme flux. Unexpected doors or walls, moving floors, odd creatures. A world only he can control. Anyone swallowed up by that world will live there for eternity, undying. They will haunt that realm as a spirit. How can our Lord forgive such an abomination? So, again, this world is in complete control. When we enter these worlds, which we do by going through holes that appear in the apartment, and when we're in those worlds, Henry is not physically going into it. Um, his physical body is staying here in the apartment. And his spiritual self, dream self, whatever, is it's not really gone into in that much detail in the context of the game. <clears throat> but not his physical self goes into Walter's dream... And if you die in the dream, your body dies in real life, and your spirit stays in the dream as a ghost. And we're going to encounter several ghosts. They're a recurring enemy, they're all victims of Walter, and they cannot die. Undying, just as it says there, living for eternity. We can deal with them, but it takes a lot. This part of the book is too damaged to read. So then a little more info here. Uh, Brockwurst, thank you for the host. Gutless Fatso, who is the Lord? They're basically using that as like the Christian term Lord. Uh, as in, this is somebody writing about this from an outside religious perspective, not part of the cult itself. Somebody who has information about the cult, but is not a part of it. It is important to travel lightly in that world. He who carries too heavy a burden will regret it. Again, this is some actual just advice for the gameplay uh, in the sense that you have a limited inventory. Uh, you have to be wary of how many things you're carrying. So there was a loud noise that came from the bathroom before I started reading and explaining all that.
what the hell? S somebody in there? I wonder if I can get out this way. Yo, what's up, Whisk Cake? That's a giant peephole. It sure is. Because we gotta... It, it takes a big hole to peep into Walter's brain. Giggity? I don't know. The sewage pipe's broken, too. Pulling the part hanging down. Got a steel pipe. Three foot long sewer pipe, not very useful, but fairly easy to use. And, uh. At this point, Henry's been trapped in here for five days. His fridge has got nothing in it but a bottle of wine and chocolate milk, which is now on me. This is his only way, potential way, out of the room. So, of course, he's going to try it. Hey, what's up, Mr. Perfect? So, much like in Silent Hill 3... There is a... There's an overall theme that kind of carries through the game. And in each of the games, there is kind of an overall theme. And the idea behind uh, birth, uh, pregnancy, impregnation has been a common theme throughout many of the Silent Hill games. It's there in Silent Hill 1, 2, and 3. And it's uh, in this one as well. Again, a lot of Walter's psych uh, psychosis stems from uh, being attached to his mother through this umbilical cord from before he was born, uh, being abandoned immediately after birth. Um, and when we see this transition from Henry's apartment through the hole into Walter's dream, it is intended to appear as though we are being born into Walter's dream. And we even see Henry start off now in Walter's dream of the subway. In like a sitting position. And a lot of times we'll see Henry starting off in this sitting similar to a fetal position. With his head down and sort of tucked near his knees. kills the audio so I can't alt tab out of this sorry I'm catching up on chat saw a couple questions um sleeping dogs may I know when you started your twitch streaming career um I started streaming regularly uh January of 2015 so that was when I very first started streaming like uh kind of like all the time almost initially I was streaming about four or five days a week usually for like two or three hours uh, for the first couple months where I was just learning to speed run um, Silent Hill 2 that was the first thing that I, I got started with um, and kind of where my channel really started building before that um, I've had my channels or like this account and everything since I want to say 2011 uh, 2011 or 2012, and um, 
I think the entire time from then uh, up until 2015, I probably streamed uh, maybe like eight times total. And I had a total of maybe 10 followers when I first started streaming in January 2015, like on the regular. Yeah, it took around two years. I've only been partnered now for, yeah, five going on six months, technically, since March. Door shut tight. Locked from the other side. So we'll come through the other side of this door much later. But it's a little bit of foreshadowing there. Um, we can get an idea that this is not part of reality and that this is a distortion of reality. This is Walter's distorted memories of the subway uh, by looking at some of the things that are in detail here, such as the Havoc's Business Daily in a strange, blurred, stretched sort of look, not the way that it's supposed to be. Everything is sort of out of focus. Uh, and this Havoc's Business Daily poster we see in clear, clean resolution in Silent Hill 3, the way that it's supposed to look, uh, for comparison. Do any of the Silent Hill PC versions have a no-clip mode? Uh, there used to be a program. I don't know if you can still track it down online. I might still have it on an old hard drive somewhere called Silent Hill Fly, SH Fly. <clears throat> I think it worked for Silent Hill 2 and 3. I'm not sure if there was something for 4, but there's definitely ways to mess around with clipping out of bounds with programs and messing around with cam hacks and uh, things like that. If you actually check out Big Man Japan's YouTube channel, he does a lot of out of bound hack, camera hack, messing with game values to see how it changes things. Um, yeah. Overall, Big Man Japan, very knowledgeable guy when it comes to, like, the technological side of, like, the build of each of the games and kind of the differences between each of the particular versions um, from, like, a technical standpoint. knows how to really get in there and mess with a lot of the code and stuff. Sometimes to really funny results. What's with this? This looks like the South Ashfield subway station. But I don't think this should be here. No sexy outfit for Cynthia? No. I'm just doing a regular New Game playthrough. No New Game Plus. Uh, so no New Game Plus costumes or content. I haven't even unlocked them, to be honest, since I've last installed this game. That'll be a project for when I come back from San Japan. We'll play a lot of Silent Hill 4 and unlock everything. Just got to get all the endings and do a couple other things. It's not too bad. Just requires multiple playthroughs, which I speedrun. It doesn't take that long. Anyway, so we've got Cynthia here in Walter's dream as well. Who are you? What's your name? Henry, and you? <laughs> this is my dream, and you don't even know my name. It's Cynthia. Your dream. That's right. <laughs> this is just a dream. And a really terrible one, too. I hope I wake up soon. So you think this is a dream, huh? Well, if it's not a dream, what is it? Anyway, I want to get out of here, but I can't find the exit. Say, will you help me find it? I'm kind of scared all alone. I'll do a special favor for you later. <laughs> It's just a dream, so I might as well have some fun. Well, all right. 
get a pretty strong idea of Cynthia's character and personality just from that little interaction. She thinks she's in a dream, and she's not very wrong. She's just not in her dream. We're in Walter's head. But either way, she can come along with us. Find out what that special favor is. And Cynthia really is best girl. I'm sorry. You can't disagree because of one simple fact. Cynthia follows you no matter where you go. If you run super far away from her and go to the next area, she teleports right to you. You run way ahead and go through a door, she's there with you. She's always by your side. Reliable Cynthia. Not like a certain other girl that we're going to have to deal with for the entire second half of this game. We'll get there. Let's just enjoy this. Wait a minute. Oh. 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 I think I'm gonna puke. Okay, so these are sniffer dogs, as they are called in the Brady Games Konami published official strategy guide. Uh, you'll notice they have different colors. That's actually to distinguish between males and females, apparently. Information that I didn't know outside of the guide, and who knows how accurate it is because Brady Games guides are usually just written by some random person not involved with the game development. But still, sometimes they do provide some interesting info. And that is like the weakest attempt at like a weird, creepy background noise. Is that sound of, like, a piece of wood dropping? I always, like, think of that in comparison to, like, Silent Hill 1's random sounds of glass smashing, or Silent Hill 2's sudden crash and scream. It's like, suddenly dropped a ruler. Super scary. Where could this crazy hole lead to? So we've got another hole. Cynthia's missing. She's not in this bathroom at all. Um, before we go back, there was one stall that's closed. But I don't think anyone's in there. At least Henry doesn't. He doesn't try to knock or look under it or make sure, but he doesn't think anyone's in there, and he's obviously pretty smart, so I'll trust him. And this hole, which leads back to the apartment... The waking world, if we were playing uh, Bloodborne, has some recognizable symbols around the edge of it as well. Some references to the Halo of the Sun, and we learned the meaning behind that in Silent Hill 3 has to do with reincarnation. Thank you. 
dream. But it seems so real. Or could it be? Was I really inside that woman's dream? Ah, oh, that's just stupid. What am I thinking? Is this... Wait, would you guys join the order in real life? No. Um, I would be one of the order fanboys. I pretty much am, but, you know. I would be like Jasper is in this game. Jasper and his friends. Where they're not members of the cult, but they know about it and they think it's cool. It's neat. Is this the only Silent Hill that has nothing to do with Silent Hill? Uh, it doesn't have nothing to do with Silent Hill. It's, it's sort of like a side story. Silent Hill is why all of this is happening. Walter's, you know, origins and everything like that. It's just not physically taking place there. So, Silent Hill is responsible. But we're, we never physically actually go there. Book of Memory has nothing to do with Silent Hill whatsoever. I mean, we'll get into the Western games in the next several days. We'll be starting that. Because this is the last Team Silent game. So next stream after this is going to be Origins. And we're going to start down that path. So we'll save that conversation. Hey, the furniture has been here uh, since I moved in. Huh? That's weird. Somebody moved it. Who could have done it? So things are moving around. Mysterious things are happening in the apartment already. And there's a gun, which is always good. You know, it's America. Sometimes it's like, Kind of like uh, you find that old pocket change or uh, whatever when you move the couch in vacuum that you forgot you had. It's like, whoops, moved the shelf. Forgot one of my guns. America. There's a pistol on the floor. Give me that. Easy to use handgun, but not much stopping power. There's a message carved in here. It looks like they used an ice pick or something. The faint hope I had is slowly changing to despair. I've somehow managed to tunnel this far, but no matter what I do, I can't get any farther. The hallway, the windows, the walls. It feels like this room is stuck in another dimension. Eileen never noticed. So this is a note left behind by Joseph. Joseph who apparently used an ice pick to carve this message as well as dig this hole through the wall. This is as far as he was able to manage, but it was just far enough for him to spy on his neighbor Eileen. But apparently she does not notice. She doesn't see this hole from her side. Again, some of that distortion of reality. room. Oh, there it is. So there's Eileen and Robbie. So it looks like Eileen has been to Silent Hill as well at some point. 
starting to see a connecting theme between Joseph, Henry, and Eileen so far. We've got something that places them all in Silent Hill at some point. Because that's where Robbie comes from. He's a mascot for the Lakeside Amusement Park. Phone's ringing. Just a minute. They all bought shoes at Silent Hill. Very true, Yoshio. Robbie is kind of cheaply inserted into the game as fan service, but... It does serve a bit of plot point, at least the one tying Eileen to... Hurry! Save me! Silent Hill. If you need a token, there's one here! So that's Cynthia. Apparently she was still there. Somehow she can call us. With our phone with, that has the line cut. Apparently that's used for calling Walter's Dream World. Which is why earlier we heard the sound of ghosts that we'll encounter when we get to that area. So at some point, when we first uh, looked through the the door, we saw Eileen. She dropped something, and now she's out here sweeping it up. Exciting stuff. Let's try the radio again. Are you yearning for that special place to spend quality time with your loved one? Do you need to relax and get away from it all? Come to Silent Hill for the ultimate peaceful getaway. Has Andrew's head floated by the window yet? We just started the game. The apartment's not even going to start getting haunted for like six more hours. Also, special place reference. Silent Hill, that tourism town, what a special place. Alright, let's go back and see if we can find Cynthia. Gutless Fatso, I know you're just joking, but those are the kinds of things that make me think like rethink when I say things like I'm gonna be at this convention you guys should come and meet me like I know you're joking around but that shit if we should ever meet in real life you're not the person I'm gonna be like comfortable to hang around I'm gonna politely shake your hand and then walk away some kind of mannequin I got a coin in its hand. It's got a coin in its hand. All right, got the Lynch Street Line coin, a reference to David Lynch. Uh, David Lynch, who has several works uh, that Silent Hill and Team Silent took a lot of inspiration from. Um, Twin Peaks. Uh, Blue Velvet, Eraserhead, Lost Highway. Um, almost his entire discography. <laughs> uh, filmography. I mean, some of his music too, but... Like everything that he's done, Team Silent has paid very close attention to. And a lot of that shines through in the game. And of course, this is just a direct 
reference to his last name. It's a train token for the subway Lynch Street line. Can be used any number of times. Did I watch New Twin Peaks? Of course. Been loving the hell out of it. So let's examine this again. It's some kind of mannequin. Creepy. It sort of reminds me of Cynthia. Sort of. Only kind of. What with how it looks exactly like her. And is dressed exactly like her. I've played Dead... Uh, I've played Deadly Premonition. It is not Twin Peaks, but a video game. It's heavily inspired, yes, but... I wouldn't necessarily call it that. But I've played it. I've just never streamed it. Maybe October. Always a chance. A weapon. Camera. The ultimate enemy. Yeah, get some wine bottle. Even just, like, normal dog enemies and stuff. This is on hard difficulty. They have a lot of health. Uh, they do a lot of damage. There we go. That's what I was waiting for. Break this bottle. It's broken. But it can still be used. And it's actually more effective now. Yes, Alan Wake has a lot of nods to Twin Peaks as well. Uh, I've played that as uh, already. I'm a huge horror fan, guys. Like, if it's an older horror game, like, there's newer stuff that I haven't caught up with yet, you know, I ha and, and a few older things, but Alan Wake, I've played, I've streamed multiple times. Uh, most things you can assume I've played or, or heard of. There's a few rare titles and things like that, but... Life is Strange. I played the first episode uh, off stream. Resident Evil 7, probably October. What is Twin Peaks about? A podcast? A TV show? It's a TV show. Uh, the first season was back in the 90s. Uh, it's currently... It had two seasons. Uh, and then a movie called Fire Walks With Me. Uh, and then it was gone for 25 years. And came back uh, just recently with a third season. And it's an amazingly good show by director David Lynch, writer Mar uh, Mark Frost. Really, really good. Anything else up here? Should be able to get to the street this way, but it's a dead end. It's not a reboot. No, it is a third season. It's a continuation. It literally went in real time. It, it stopped for 25 years, and in the context of the story... It takes place 25 years later. It's a continuation of the same story, characters, stuff. And this is our first encounter with ghosts. We've got a couple here. Um, unfortunately... Oh... There's Cynthia. Oh, 
So it's kind of hard to get a look at the ghosts. And unfortunately, in the context of the game itself, we don't even get all the information on who all of Walter's victims are. Um, Toby Archbolt is the older black man ghost in the ugly sweater, who I usually call Bill Cosby. Um, and I believe the other ghost that we saw in the cutscene there uh, that first started after us was Jimmy Stone, uh, Walter's first victim. Uh, and Jimmy Stone was a priest of the order. Push that. That's locked. Hey, Cynthia. You can see the ghosts just like... They are unkillable. They can hurt you just by being near you. You can see sort of when the screen distorts. Uh, I'll take damage. We don't have a, uh, a way to deal with them right now. There's a toy box here. It has 1,000 whatevers written on it. It's locked and I can't open it. We'll have to come back to that much later. What's up, Plague? Your favorite is Steve. Uh, Steve Garland. I would say uh, Braintree is probably my favorite of the ghosts. He's like extra creepy. King Jupe, thank you for the host. Oh no, Grandma. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of Grandma. One second. I actually have victim file notes here. Sharon Blake. Sharon Blake, uh, here, let's take a moment and hear me. What is up, by the way? How's it going? My dude, my friend. Nobody can beat Richard Braintree. Yes, that is his uh, full name. Good old Dick Brain. So let's take a moment. I'm going to read about each of the victims kind of as we encounter the ghosts. Uh, victim number one, Jimmy Stone. So this first ghost that we're seeing, uh, kind of with the grayish looking face. He was a priest of Valtiel. And this information, by the way, I am reading off of the victim files. These victim files were originally posted on Silent Hill 4's website. Uh, they are archived and hosted on SilentHillMemories.net, which is where I'm reading them from. If you want to read along with this or read into this information more yourself. Uh, but Jimmy Stone was a priest of Valtiel. His nickname was the Red Devil. And he becomes the excuse for the use of that term Red Devil in Silent Hill 2 in the article about Walter Sullivan. Uh, whereas at the time, in the context of just Silent Hill 2, they hadn't thought as far as writing or having even a Silent Hill 4. So... In that game, it was a foreshadowing moment to Pyramid Head, but it was kind of reworked into being Jimmy Stone here for the context of Silent Hill 4. And you'll notice there's a lot of things that this game sort of takes from previous game mentions and kind of reworks into its own uh, usage. And then uh, Toby, like I said, who I called... Bill Cosby is a priest of the Holy Mother sect, a rival sect of the Order to uh, uh, Jimmy Stone. Um, <laughs> in the victim notes, 
It shows his hobbies are gambling and sex, and his other interests are likes underage girls. Uh, he was pushed off a 100-meter-high cliff in the woods of Mexico, which is an interesting way for Walter to kill someone. And the problem with a lot of this stuff is this was like promotional material stuff. It's interesting getting some names and backstories and stuff for some of these characters, but they worked on... They should have worked it into the game somehow, and I wish they would have made some things a little more, I guess, relevant. And then uh, Sharon Blake, Grandma Ghost there. Uh, her family members are... or her Members of her family are in the cult. She knew that the Silent Hill Church was a fraud, believed that they had abducted and were keeping her family, so they must have brainwashed members of her family into being in the cult. She decided to go to the Wish House Orphanage, which she had heard about in Joseph Schreiber's published article, uh, which is where, once she went to investigate that, she would have run into Walter, and Walter would have killed her as part of his ritual. So that's all the ghosts that we've encountered so far. Three victims. And it's kind of hard to get a chance to look here. Just because, again... You can see I've already taken a lot of damage. Hard difficulty. It's no slouch. Uh, one second. On the site I linked, what does theme of murder mean? So where it says theme of murder, darkness, uh, theme of murder, gloom, uh, the theme of murder refers to specific purposes for their sacrifice. They basically equate to specific roles in the overall ritual. So these people were specific to Walter uh, and encountered him in very specific ways, and they each have to fill very specific roles. So as we go through the game, we'll learn a little bit more about what each victim's role was. Because of the way that... Imagine, you know, the way that this, this ritual is written out. Um, you're supposed to have somebody who represents each of these themes so like somebody who represents darkness somebody who represents gloom somebody who represents uh source um people like joseph uh who also have other titles within the context of the ritual such as the giver of wisdom henry himself has a title within the ritual as the receiver of wisdom um the Eileen, uh, Eileen has a title within the overall ritual, um, as the Holy Mother. So there's like all these different aspects to each of the victims and kind of how they're relevant to these parts of this ritual. And we're going to visit, revisit a lot of these areas later on. Um, which is why you'll kind of want to like explore and do some prep work. Unlock some of these locked doors. Because it'll act as a bit of a shortcut later on. Where you don't have to go through such a dangerous path. when we're going to this place later on. Okay. 
And this is something else that we wind up seeing recurring through each of Walter's dream worlds. Um, this is known as the Greedy Worm. It represents an umbilical cord, which again has a lot of symbolism to Walter as being a direct connection to his mother. Walter's obsessed with his mother. He was abandoned as a child. It's part of a overlying psychosis that was manipulated further by the cult into performing a ritual which awakens a holy mother. Walter is led to believe that that is his mother waking up. It's actually just a way of birthing one of the cult's gods, isn't it always? But um, we see this greedy worm acting as this umbilical cord, this connection between each of Walter's created worlds. Uh, we see it pop up several times Henry, I found the exit. as kind of a Come link. To the Henry, I found the exit. Come to the yeah, yeah, get, get the circumcision Henry. joke out of the way. There's a command for it and everything. SH4 skin. The number four. Uh, I died. But yeah, feel free to click on that link. If you want to read up on the Silent Hill 4 circumcision jokes that are going to be happening during this entire playthrough. Because they're hilarious and original. I'm just kidding. It is actually a really funny read because essentially the Silent Hill wiki editor went fucking insane and posted a bunch of stuff unrelated to Silent Hill about circumcision all over the Silent Hill wiki. Uh, it's great. It's amazing. It's, it's bizarre and really worth a read. Oh, wow. All the way back here. That's fine. The benefits of being a speedrunner. Tell us about the penis head cows. This is not or that's in Origins. We're not playing that. Not tonight. Not right now. Let's see if I can get over here and grab some bullets. Again, taking way more damage than I wanted to, but I'm trying not to con not to waste ammo. And as long as you can make it back to the room for the first half of the game, um, you heal while you're in your apartment. So during this early part of the game, it's far more worthwhile to conserve supplies. Don't use healing items. and just try to make it periodically back to the room to heal. In fact, if there's some things over here. Oh no, that's not gonna help though. Path is blocked by rubble. Oh wow, the bullets are on the other side. Is there nothing here? Filled with some kind of weird stuff. Hey, Forest Arrow. presence of Bill Cosby was going to kill me there. I'm probably still going to die to the ghosts here. Just by being near them. Oh, wow. 
wow, all three. Right here. Hard mode's hard, guys. Don't die, it's not a big deal. As said, it's not a speed run. I'm not in a hurry. And I can at least rush to catch up when I do, like, die without wasting too much time, so it's fine. Let's go up here. More bullets. Another blocked area. The one pixel. But I'm about to have a chance to go back to the room and heal. Trimmer, please. Plus what, Pom Pom? What's up, Nicole? The fucking camera angles. <laughs> See, I like the camera angles, you know, and I like static camera angles and dramatic camera angles in these games. And Mint Ninja, thank you for that host. Thank you so much. Welcome everybody coming over. Um, I like that. I, I love that as part of the Silent Hill games, but... It's a, it's a bit more annoying in games like this one, where you can't have tank controls. Tank controls, at the very least, means it doesn't matter where the camera is, if it's pointed at you, if it's above you, if it's below you, if it's super far away. Uh, at the very least, your movement is consistent. Up is always forward. Down always moves you back. You rotate left and right. And I feel like the removal of tank controls kind of didn't help this game as far as feeling kind of fluid in the way that you move through it, but maybe that's just me. I've always preferred the tank controls. A lot of people don't have a problem with uh, directional controls, so it kind of comes down to personal preference. And hey, Maxi, how's it going? Can't open the window. Yep. Ever since I started having those nightmares. Trapped here for five days. It's that lake in Silent Hill, Toluca. I went sightseeing there a few years ago. I like this photo because it really captures the beauty and tranquility of the trees and lake there. I put this up on the wall right after I moved here. Got Toluca right above the bed. What a nice place, that, that Silent Hill resort town. Guys just like stomping around. All right. Let's see if anything is going on. Still no new handprints. Nothing really. Going on out there. Still no Eileen. Robbie's hanging out. Uh, let's do some inventory dump. <laughs> Go ahead and put that away. Put some of the bullets away. The rest of that's fine for now. And now the news. 
in Washington, a gathering of 200,000 oh, people... Oh, this is the same one we heard before. ...gun control laws in the wake of a spate of violent oh, well. shootings throughout the country turned tragic when shots were fired into the crowd. Two people were killed and several wounded, including a three-year-old child. At this moment, no suspects have been found. Police are investigating the source of the shot. Oh yeah, I didn't look around in here initially. Clothes dryer, it's just the laundry room, like storage. But there is some useful things that you wind up uh, using later. A tank filled with oil, for example, will help later on. We never get a flashlight, but there is a particular part where we have a torch. And uh, this oil will actually let the torch burn for a longer amount of time. Tools and things on the ground. Cool. Just for the sake of being thorough, sometimes stuff shows up behind the shelves and notes slip up under the door. No. That's Preferred 2D in Silent Hill 2, but 3D in Silent Hill 3. Huh. You're weird. <laughs> Henry washes his clothes with oil. You don't? Hi there, Silent Hill 4 is my favorite. What's up, Samuel? 2 is my favorite. But I still like the story of this one a lot. And it's been a while since I've done a good... Slow, in-depth playthrough. Let's go ahead and use this. Shut up, you. Two makes you cry. It's supposed to. I found the exit. Come to the turnstile. Alright, Cynthia found the exit. Henry, I found the exit. Come to the turnstile. Hurry! Hurry! I'm gonna try going back to the room here. I'm just curious if anything particular triggers while going into specific holes that lead you back. Not to mention it creates a more recent continue point whenever you go back to your room. That's where you'll uh, continue off from. Hey! And it was totally worth it already because we came back and got the Robbie Head hot air balloon Easter egg. This is why I want to check the windows and everything, like, every time I come back to the room. It's so easy to miss some of the things that can happen uh, in all the things that you can, like, look at. There's lots of little animations uh, that Eileen does. Lots of voice clips on the radio. Uh, things that happen outside the front door that you can see through the peephole. So there's a lot of cool stuff that can happen that uh, sometimes, like, won't happen in a playthrough. Some, like, a lot of it is random. And as said, some of it can also be uh, very easily missed if you don't check kind of everything. Nothing on the radio. Anything new from Eileen? Still just Robbie. Oh.
It's Frank. Frankie Sons. Frank Sunderland. James Sunderland's father. The superintendent of the apartment building. Seems to be helping out uh, cleaning up whatever Eileen dropped. Cleans everything except the handprints. Nobody sees those handprints except for Henry. Um, Henry can see them uh, since he is in a more, as said, distorted reality, being inside room 302. Um, but the people out there, they, they don't see those. I can put this away now as well. Hey, Turtle. How's Storm treating me? At the very least, it's made the temperature go down, so it's not so hot. Uh, but it also knocked my power out several times. And I wasn't sure if I was actually going to be able to stream uh, if I kept getting power outages. But luckily it cleared up. And it's not, uh, it hasn't been so bad or anything. It's not where I'm at. I'm up in North Austin, so I'm like nowhere near the destructive area of the hurricane. Streets of flowing river now. Holy shit, turtle. Definitely be careful, man. I'm killing all of these. Oh my god. There we go. Don't hit me. Crap. I hate these guys. They ruin speedruns. And they're slapping the shit out of me right now, too. Oh my god. Alright. Gun time. Iframes. to save some bullets. Somebody slaps your shit. That's what's going on, man. I'm getting my shit slapped. They ruin every playthrough? Yeah. Casual speed run. These are annoying enemies to deal with. the garage when winter comes does it cold it gets cold but i mean i like it to be cold so i mean it's it's perfect for me i actually enjoy the cold hey xander the yards a creek from all the rain the trees have lost some branches but that's the worst of it Yeah, luckily we don't have really big trees. We were a little bit worried. Um, I was a little bit worried that I've got some trees next to some of the windows up in the main apartment, so I was kind of worried about the wind picking up and maybe breaking the window, but it didn't even get that bad. Oh my god, screw it. Taking too much damage now. I just want to try to make it up so I can get back to the room and heal.
Grab some bullets. If it gets cold here, I mean, it gets cold here occasionally in the winter. We just have a very short winter season. But it does get cold. Not actual cold. Not what people who live anywhere further north call cold. But it's the best we get, damn it. Women's makeup items are scattered on the ground. These must be Cynthia's. And judging by the blood spattered on that window and outside here... Uh, I'm not sure Cynthia's going to be needing them for very much longer. The King Street line exit. King Street, reference to Stephen King, horror author. Again, lots of... Uh, inspiration from his works influences the Silent Hill series. And we were mentioning the themes of murder earlier. Each of the Walter's victims having a different role that they essentially fill uh, for the overall ritual, the 21 sacraments. And uh, for the victims that we encounter ourselves throughout the game, um, we find these plates that explain their role, such as we're about to find Cynthia uh, as a victim of Walter. And she represents temptation, which we get here. Placard from Subway World shows a woman and says temptation. Notice that the description of this area that we're in is not Ashfield subway system. It is subway world. This is not, you know, a physical place where we're actually running around. This is a world created in Walter's mind that he can essentially cre control and bring people into and for his victims if they die here in this sort of world this dream of his they stay here as those ghosts we've been encountering let's see if Cynthia's okay Cynthia. Man, what 
What's that noise out there? It's called a siren, genius. Usually belongs to emergency vehicles. Henry's a little slow. There's a lot of things that should make sense to him that don't make sense to him. And I wonder if that was meant to be part of his personality, if it's supposed to be something to do with his mental state going back and forth between reality and Walter's worlds uh, that's like messing with how he kind of acts and perceives things um, or if he's just really really stoned and like doesn't know what's going on man do you have any rolling papers Henry, personality, and I, and I get the idea of wanting to have, like, an everyman. I get that. Um, but there's better ways to do that and still have the character have a lot of personality. Anyway, there's an ambulance and a police car near the subway entrance. Is it Cynthia? It's kind of interesting sometimes when you sit and watch a lot of the random traffic and things that happen out the window. Occasionally things will kind of glitch. I've seen models and stuff clipping through each other and walking through uh, other objects. I've seen cars clip through each other and stuff. Hot air balloon still there. Yo, Ducky, what's up? Thank you for that host. And welcome everybody coming over from Ducky's channel. How's the weather? It It's calmed down now. It has been calming down where I'm at, so... The wiring... Oh. Get that Quit yapping and move her already. Okay, so going back to that. Cynthia had numbers carved into her chest. 16121. So, let's take a look here. And there is now a fresh handprint. A representation that Walter has taken another victim. Cynthia. She is Walter's 16th victim. And the numbers carved into her were 16121. One. And Walter is performing a ritual known as the 21 Sacraments, with a total of 21 victims. This is the significance of the numbers. Cynthia is the 16th out of 21 total victims. And this is how we can tell how far along... Walter is progressing through this ritual. And essentially how much time we have left to figure out what's going on and how to stop him. So let's put some stuff away. Um, that's fine. We still got Frank out there sweeping up. Anything going on in Eileen's? What's up, Ace? Need to waste two more hours till you get ready for your flight. Finally heading back home from your sister's wedding. Nice. Did you have a good time? Eviana is here. Eviana is here. And Eileen is going to go check out, presumably, the ambulance and the uh, other emergency vehicles out there. The commotion. Cynthia's death. So the numerics aren't really 16121, but are more accurately read as 16 out of 21. Correct, Amp. Twenty-one victims, hold up, that means there are five more. Math. 
mathematical. The one is a forward slash, yes. Which means Walter is officially the first Silent Hill protagonist to use Leet speak. In a way. Protagonist, antagonist. He's kind of a hero. <laughs> Somebody mentioned what ending am I going for. And I, to be honest, um, I really prefer the bad endings in this game. I like Walter winning. He's had a shitty life. He needs a win. Let him have this. You know? But, um... I'll leave that up to you guys. Actually, if one of my moderators, Hirimi, uh, if you're in a situation where you could maybe do that, or Relicanth, um, maybe make a straw poll for me of which ending to get, uh, which ending to go for. We have until the halfway point of the game to decide, because that's when hauntings will start, and that's when the escort mission starts. And the only two things that factor into the endings are um, if we save Eileen and if we clear all the hauntings. So we have the entire first half of the game to let a poll, uh, let a poll run and see which ending people would rather see. Mods know how to do that if I try. Uh... I mean, it's just like a straw poll website thing. I can make it myself if nobody else uh, knows how to do it. That's fine. Just let me know. What's up, Action of Loss? Just found this channel. Now I'm regretting using my Prime subscription this month. It's all good. Give me a follow. I'll see you in September. We're, we We play a lot of Silent Hill here. We have a good time. You'll make it. Thank you so much, Enigma. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we got another thing under the door. Scrap of red paper. And this is how Joseph Schrieber is feeding us information. Joseph Schrieber, again, was the tenant we saw die in the intro of this game uh, via first person. And um, his spirit is trapped much like the other ghosts. However, somehow Joseph is able to kind of retain part of himself. And I think that is due in part to his role in the overall ritual being classified as the giver of wisdom. He is meant to impart wisdom to Henry, the receiver of wisdom. It's just part of the semantics of the ritual, apparently. Um, but because he's able to maintain that aspect, uh, he is literally just giving information to Henry throughout the game uh, by means of these red diary scraps. Uh, although the cult itself is gone, I'm sure the spirit of it is still alive. There are too many strange things happening in that town. I'm investigating two people, or maybe I should say just one. I've just about discovered what's going on. April 8th. So we get his earlier entries to when he's kind of first having his suspicions about what's going on and doing his initial research. And as time goes on and as we progress more and more through the game and kind of learn things ourselves by going into these worlds and that are part of Walter, part of his memories and uh, piecing together bits of the story that way. We're also learning uh, Joseph Schrieber's side of the story and kind of how he discovered what's going on and Walter's significance and what the cult is aiming to do. All right, and with that, let's go ahead and get to... The next world of Walters. 
the hole has changed. It's getting bigger. So each time we finish one area and progress more, the hole into this reality opens up more and more. Reality distorts more and more. Thank you for making the poll, Enigma. Much appreciated. And by the way, for everybody here... If you're not already following an Eternal Enigma... He's a master of Silent Hill 4. A huge fan of the series and... Longtime streamer, content creator, an amazing streamer to watch, one of the most entertaining people on Twitch, the most electrifying man on Twitch. I mean, I don't care about baseball, and he gets me interested in watching uh, baseball video games, if that says anything. So give him a follow. It's too dark to see. So we can't see inside that well. And I mentioned we're going to have a torch. And this is the segment where we'll get that torch, but it's not until we revisit it much later. It's a cliff. I can't go on. Uh, can't go forward here. writing. What does it mean? So there's some writing that Henry can't make out. I don't know if that's just because he's unable to read. Like, naturally. Or if it's because that writing is specific to Walter. It's part of his memories. And the opportunity you get to read uh, those bits comes later when you've got Eileen accompanying you. And she has to at least be a little bit possessed by Walter. We'll talk more about the possession stuff later on when we get there, but she has to be at least a little bit possessed in order to read those. So if she's not kind of having that connection with Walter through that possession, you're unable to read a lot of that uh, writing. Okay, not much has happened yet. This is just a forest world. Uh, this is Walter's memory and um, created dream world based on the orphanage, uh, the Wish House, also known as Hope House. Um, and the surrounding forest. So this is the orphanage that he was raised in. That we're going to be going through. And the surrounding area. Oh. Ringing the doorbell. Hey, Eileen. Help me! Help! Let me out of here! There's something going on in this room. What do you mean? I heard weird noises coming from inside there. Help! Richard, can you see anything from your window? No. Everything looks pretty normal to me. The guy who lives here, what's he like anyway? I know his name and face, but that's about it. Well, I'm gonna go call the super. Yeah, good idea. Yep. They can't hear me. That's our boy Braintree. Richard Braintree, a.k.a. Dick Brain. He's an asshole, but he's also, like, simultaneously one of my favorite characters in this game. And honestly, I kind of wish there was a little bit more to him. 
But you do get some interesting kind of like backstory of him. Like, he beats the shit out of a stalker and points a gun at a child. You know, a general American hero. Repost every five minutes or so. Thank you. I can actually make a bot command really quick if that'll help. Copy. Vote on the ending to go for. There we go. So that way, if uh, if anybody needs that link later on, you can just say exclamation point poll. Vote for the ending. What ending to go for. Once I get to the halfway point of the game, there's a very specific moment that's the halfway point of the game. And whatever's in the lead by that point, after a very serious bit of RNG, is the ending that uh, we will attempt to get. I'll do my best to protect Eileen if we wind up getting a good ending voted for. Maybe not. As said, I prefer the bad endings. Walter's had a tough life. He needs a win. There's no item over here. Uh. All right, here we go. We're coming up on one of my favorite characters. Um, I'm actually going to come back to this car. There's some notes and things that are inside this car that we can read, um, but they're written by this gentleman that's up here, so we're going to talk to him first, uh, see what he has to say, then we'll come back and read what he wrote down. Uh, sometimes this part's a little bit quiet. I'm going to mute my mic just to kind of keep from mixing the background noise and stuff in and so we can properly hear him. Kind of 
it gives you the chill, chills, huh? This stone. So, he gives us an idea of the the cult. He knows about it. And this uh, character I mentioned earlier, Jasper Gain, is essentially um, a fanboy of the cult. He's Him and his friends are just interested in the occult and, and things like that. They um, research it just out of hobby. And um, that's kind of what led them here and got them involved. Was They got a little bit too close. They came by and were poking around in the woods in Silent Hill around the orphanage that is supposedly run by the cult that Joseph Schreiber published an article about. And that's one of the things to keep in mind about kind of the time frame of this game. During the events of, like, Silent Hill 1, the cult was very underground. You know, people didn't really know about it, um, except for locals um, but it wasn't something that was widely known to the rest of the world. At this point, Joseph Schreiber, you know, the journalist who is feeding us information in this game, is, um, and one of Walter's victims, published, you know, a, a public article about the cult. So at this point, um, everybody in the world, including Jasper and his friends, knows about it. And so, of course, you have people who are just interested in the occult and things like that become interested in this. Come by to research it. Or s poke around and see what they can find and get involved in a crazy murderer's ritual. much damage um somebody asked uh yeah kitty wolf how long from now until how long do i think this will be it's been about two and a half hours and i'm only on forest world um as said i might hurry this along a little bit later i would say probably no shorter than like seven more hours and that's being fairly conservative it'll probably be probably be longer there's a lot to this game, and a lot that I like going into. So here we are, Silent Hill Smile Support Society, a.k.a. Wish House. That's the orphanage run by the cult, huh? Got some more weird writing, you can see... This is the orphanage itself, and there's all sorts of, you know, kids' toys around, uh, children's drawings all over the walls. Definitely a lot of kids were here. Looks like graffiti drawn by a kid. Gonna get Chainsaw or no? Chainsaw is New Game Plus, isn't it? This is regular New Game. Must be some kind of kid's toy. Same thing. I think I'll be heading to bed then. Love your streams. Favorite Silent Hill game. Oh, it's all good. That's what the VODs are for. I never expect anybody to really sit through the entirety of the stream from, like, beginning to end. Although a surprising number of people always do. But that is what the VODs are there for. Same thing here. And, uh, by the way, if you take a look at that Wish House sign, take a look at that font. Oh, my phone's going crazy. Flash flood warning. Until 5 a.m. Uh, I'm 
not quite in my area. I'm okay. Comic Sans warning. <laughs> my phone is warning me. Actually, I got eaten up by those dogs pretty bad. I'm going to go back to the room, heal up, maybe drop some bullets. I think I pick up some more ammo here, and I'm not really trying to fight too many things. Honestly, it winds up becoming kind of a waste. There are more dangerous enemies that I have to deal with more directly later on that I want to save a lot of supplies for. Big streamer Admiral Baru was talking about his apartment's basement flooding. Uh, yeah, um, I know Baru, and uh, Baru lives in Austin. That's unfortunate. As said, there there are some parts of uh, Austin and stuff that got it pretty bad. We we did get a lot of rain and wind here, uh, and as said, I had power going out and stuff. But where I'm located right now is, you know, I'm not in a in a like a flooding danger zone. Danger zone. Shit has basements around here? Yeah, a few places, but not a lot. Basements are extremely rare in Texas, for people who don't know. Uh, because we have sheet after sheet after sheet of limestone just under the surface of the ground. So it is usually more work than it is uh, called for. Uh, when it comes to basements and things like that. It's much easier to build things upward for storage. Not that there aren't basements, as said. They're just extremely rare. And now the news. Yesterday, Wally the Walrus, a longtime resident of the Wally? Springfield Zoo, gave birth to a healthy baby walrus pup named Buttercup. Aww. Mother and child are doing just fine. How nice. That's great. Wally, a reference to Walter, perhaps. A mother and child doing fine. Something that Walter desires. Something he never had. Damn, that sucks, Dat Boy. That's good that they're okay, but that still is a shitty situation to have to live with. Looking right at me. But not really. I mean... Yep. It's funny because there are some animations where it seems like she notices the hole. But never... Never, like, heavily questions it. Maybe she's into it? Never know. Considering that alternate costume, I get the feeling Eileen is into some alternative things. She's, uh, she's not so, so plain Jane, so white bread.
makes you wonder what kind of party she's talking about going to. Ah! Dick brain. Cody, thank you for the host. Silent nudes for silent dudes. Yes? What? What does that even mean? Tornado warning yesterday. Rain, but one hour after the warning. Bright sun outside. Yep. Nature. Still nothing in the fridge. means whatever you think it means. It means you're still not allowed within 250 yards of me. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you again uh, just to thank you myself rather than just on Twitter for giving me the info about the, uh, the Wii converter. That's going to help out. I was a little bit worried about how I was going to do Shattered Memories in the next couple of days when I'm going through all the Western games for a story playthrough. Because, um, yeah, my, my Elgato only captures HDMI right now, and I don't have a Wii U or a Switch or anything. I just have the original Wii, which doesn't have HDMI out. So that HDMI converter you pointed me out should be arriving today, actually, later. Creepy little kid. This is our first encounter with Walter. And within Walter's world, there's two aspects of him. There is Walter as an adult, as he was after being so deceived and twisted by the cult and their beliefs. And then there's this Walter, which kind of represents that last little bit of innocence that used to be in used to be part of him hey little boy what are you doing here you're finally the third revelation Something's gonna happen. Jasper's that shirt. Nosy guy that was here. He said it too. Something big is gonna happen. Finally, it's gonna happen. <laughs> that was the uh, incubus. The final boss from Silent Hill One. And. The lettering on his shirt says Hauros, which is a uh, slight mistranslation of Flauros. The cult artifact used in Silent Hill 1 to break through Alessa's psychic barrier. <clears throat> and Jasper, as a fanboy of the cult, he realizes he's part of this now and uh, he realizes something big is going to happen uh, oh yeah we got to go back and read the notes in Jasper's car going to go do that but first I'm going to take a look at this grave on the bottom of this coffin are the numbers 11121 so the significance of this uh, is this is the amount of time in real time that it took an Eternal Enigma to beat Silent Hill 4 any percent uh, at GDQ. 
It took uh, one hour, 11 minutes, and 21 seconds. I'm not joking, by the way. That's a fact. You can look that up. Uh, but no, as we were talking about earlier with Cynthia, um, the third one is actually read as uh, a slash, and it represents the number of the victim out of the total 21 sacraments. Uh, the 11th victim being Walter Sullivan uh, himself. He killed himself and was the 11th victim as a way of completing the first half of the ritual that lets him continue to exist after death and affect all of these things, create these worlds, essentially gain the power of Silent Hill. Uh, he harnesses the power of the town itself by doing this ritual. Enigma equals Walter. That's why he's got that long hair. Oh, I'll be back, Jasper. I'm going to go dig around in your car. Hey, what's up, Rob? So this is like a spike trap that's set up on a path leading away from the orphanage, which just kind of shows, kind I guess, like a very demented sense of inescapability from this orphanage. I don't know if there was literally traps and things like that, considering everything else this cult does. It wouldn't be too much of a surprise. Or if it was something that Walter was sort of representing symbolically how impossible it felt to escape or how dangerous it was to, uh, dangerous it was to try to run away from this orphanage and from the cult. Yo, but is that UFO Techie hosting me for a bunch of people? What's going on, Techie? Thank you so much for the host. Welcome, anybody watching uh, from Techie's host. Anybody coming over? We are in the midst of a Silent Hill 4 uh, slow story playthrough. I'm playing the PC version with, like, widescreen mod and in higher resolution and everything. We're going to read some notes by Jasper Gain. I'm going to do my best Jasper impersonation. Uh, impersonation. It stopped with the brake pedal engaged. There are all sorts of things scattered on the seat. Among the trash is a scrap of paper with something written on it. It's b b been a while since I c came here to... Silent Hill. M maybe I'll meet the d d devil this time. But when, whenever I come to a c c cool place like s Silent Hill, I always get real thirsty. Jasper Gain. There's a memo pad in there too. I'm not sh sure what that n n nosy guy m meant when he said his home is the th th orphanage in the m m middle. The lake is n northwest, so the op op opposite is southeast. The nosy guy s said w w one other thing I t don't understand. If you bring the d dug up key, you can't go back. Put it away somewhere before. Before you return there. So we 
gives us a hint what we're going to do with the key when we get that key. And the nosy guy that he's referring to in that message is journalist and former tenant of room 302, Joseph Schrieber himself. I'm going to mute my mic again so we can listen to all of Jasper's dialogue here. The, the d d door won't open. That nosy guy g g gave me something really good. I, I, I could let you have it, but, 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 but not for free. I'm really thirsty. I'm so, so thirsty. Oh, chocolate. Oh, chocolate. Well, why didn't you just say so in the first place? I've got some right in my pocket. Oh, man, that was awesome. Here, take this. There's something written on it. Yeah, thanks for handing it to me, asshole. You're welcome, by the way, for the infinite bottle of chocolate milk. I mean, he will just stand here and chug this milk infinitely. And that's a little bottle. That's like a Lunchable milk. But yeah, he's an asshole. He just throws the shovel down. He doesn't hand it to you. Um, I used to have a theory, and I love that it, it... Explaining it, this is one of the great things about streaming and getting to talk with other fans and stuff kind of about the way that you think about stuff in games. Um, where I used to think it was a mechanics thing because you have limited inventory space, so you don't always necessarily want to take an item just because you've encountered it. Sometimes you want to wait and do item management, go back to your apartment, sort things out, and then come back and pick something up later. So I figured that was why he throws it down on the ground and that he doesn't just hand it to you because essentially what could happen is he would try to hand it to you, your inventory would be full, and then you'd have to deal with that. But then somebody pointed out your inventory, even if you have your inventory maxed out, one of the items in that inventory is the milk which disappears from your inventory as soon as you give it to him so it could the shovel could just replace the milk and he could just hand it to you no matter what but no it's just part of his character now he just throws it on the ground to be a dick it's a small spade with a bloody inscription written in blood is opposite where the lake and house meet inside the hand holding on to the ground Let's go ahead and run for it. I might take some damage on the way there, but as long as I don't die, isn't that always the case? Wow, not a single thing hit me on that screen. Ball. 
I have no idea what that sound is. It's just a creepy growl, roar, whatever it is. You never see a creature make that noise. And you only ever seem to hear it in this spot. Whoops. An arm coming up from the ground. Oh man, thank god. It's just a tree root. Got the rusted bloody key. Rusted and bloody key inscribed on it is the holder of this key will wander for eternity. So, if you try to just take the key directly back to the orphanage to open up the door, notice we get this cool new filter. as well as a never-ending loop of this segment of the trail. And I like how, at this point, you've already been running through these sort of segments of the forest several times. And you already kind of know that they're similar looking. And it's just similar enough that when you kind of play this the first time, it probably will take you a moment, like a few loops, to figure out what's going on. <laughs> EJ, thank you for the five. What is that sound? Uh, as Enigma points out, it is used on the rooftop of uh, Silent Hill 3, uh, the rooftop of Brookhaven. I know you hate Downpour. Will I do a story in-depth playthrough of it? Yes. I'm doing all the games in release order. The goal is to finish all of this before Thursday, because uh, Thursday I'm going out of town. I'm going to be in San Antonio. Um, I am the night events director for an anime convention called San Japan. So I'm going to be out of town for several days helping uh, with that. So I'm going to try to get through the whole series uh, before I leave for that. At the very least, the main console games. So Origins, Homecoming, Shadow Memories, and Downpour after I finish 4. Not tonight, obviously, in the next couple days. Uh, Aris Gel. Aras. Ara. Aris Gel, thank you for the Twitch Prime fresh subscription. Thank you so very much for the support. But yeah, I'll be going through all the Western games over the next several days. And, um... I, I mean, it's just... I feel it's only fair. I do these story playthroughs to kind of explain... Not only just the elements of the plot and everything, but kind of why I like these games so much. Um, why they're so entertaining to me. Why I enjoy replaying them so often. Because a lot of people are always kind of curious about that. Why it's like... How can you stand, you know, playing the same games and stuff over and over... And to me, like, these games, there are so many different layers to them and so many different ways that things can be interpreted. Um, and I love playing them, especially in, like, the Twitch format with other fans who are watching because it makes for some really good discussions. People bring up their own theories and their own ways of seeing things. There's a lot to these games. And... I feel the Western ones, Origins and Onward, are not as good, to say the least. We'll get to those, and I'll talk about them in much greater detail, why I don't think they're as good. But, as I said, I, I always try to at least 
go through the games that I don't think are good and actively explain why I don't like them. Um, just the same way that I would explain why I enjoy a good game. Police arrested a Mr. Saguru Murakashi <laughs> after he was discovered naked, urinating from the top of a utility pole in North Ashfield. Suguru Murakoshi, who was naked and urinating and was arrested. That's the writer of Silent Hill 4, by the way. Oh my god. And she's gone. What was that all about? What's up, Psylocke? God damn it, Dick. Alright. So, we put the key away. Which means... Now, we won't be looping for eternity. And admittedly, I kind of like these segments. I wish they were a little more thought out, a little more clever. Um, but I do kind of like these segments where you use your ability of being able to go back and forth uh, from your apartment into Walter's world as a way of getting around obstacles. There's a few times where you do it. Let's just enjoy that noise again. Oh god, don't. But that way, at the very least, you know, this kind of integrates going back to your apartment. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry, that sneeze snuck up on me. I couldn't mute in time. Rip headphone users. I'm sorry. Oh, God. All the wind has been stirring up fucking allergies. Oh, thank you, everybody. <laughs> and again, sorry. <sighs> Sneezing out my virus. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Cody. Oh, yeah, and so I picked up a uh, golf club here. Um should also point out this is the first game that has a breakable Here, type of weapon this. um zero thank you for the 100 bits appreciate that thank you so much but yeah just uh the same way i was using the bottle earlier and showing that that can break and kind of change um, the golf clubs can break and not be used after they break. So it's the first weapon that's kind of like can be destroyed and no longer usable. Which becomes the theme in a couple of the other games. Uh, Origins, most notably for carrying a lot of breakable crap around with you. Um, downpour, also with destructible weapons. And now the news. In Washington, a guy... God, that's like the third time we've gotten that same one. Oh, well. What's up, Stealth? I'm doing pretty good. I've been streaming. Had a lot more time to do it again. Let's put that away. I'll keep that. Oh, 
Oh, right. I need the key. Yeah, this week I've been going through, um, doing in-depth story playthroughs. Last couple of weeks, uh, I was doing some speed running and stuff like that. Still been doing the occasional, um, <laughs> semi-regular Metal Gear Solid Five Nights with Hirimi, which will return at some point. Probably, I guess, just the week after I get back from San Japan, hearing me. You found it, huh? Oh. G gives me the chills. Gives him the chills. So he knows about this key. And he, from that reaction, it seems like He's already tried taking the key and opening up the orphanage and was going through that infinite loop. And that's what, like, creeped him out, gave him the chills. Yeah, that's what I mean. Not this week. Next week, when I get back. Do I like XCOM 2? I do. I've done a full playthrough of it on stream, uh, although it's been quite some time since I did that. Um, I haven't even played it since, like, the last couple of expansions and things. Stealth with the six months in a row. Thank you so much for the continued support, Stealthism. Much appreciated. Welcome back. You're here at a good time. We're wrapping up Forest World. Child's drawing. So, again, just more instances of children being prevalent in the orphanage. Go figure. broken lock. I always thought it was interesting how they have this, like, area right here. Because you never can open this, and it's got, like, a unique camera angle and everything, but it's, it's just a dead end. There is a note right here that is of some interest and worth discussion. There's a scribbled note. Have you found Alessa yet? How is Walter's progress coming along? Send me a report. So we learn from some of the texts later on that Eileen will be able to read uh, when we revisit this area that Dahlia Gillespie is a regular here at the orphanage. She comes by and uh, talks with a lot of the children um, as well as in helps to instill them with the cult's beliefs and uh, teach them uh, the various cult uh, religion. And, like, at this point, we have a note that is most likely from Dahlia Gillespie requesting information on Alessa being found. So most likely this is at some point when Alessa had split her soul and she's referring to finding the missing half of Alessa's soul, Cheryl. And how is Walter's progress coming along? Um, Walter as a child, his brainwashing, essentially, being the progress that is being referred to there. Since Alessa was being used in kind of a different type of ritual for a different god to be born... It seems they have this other ritual that they were teaching Walter, the 21 Sacraments, that talks about bringing about the birth of what they call the Holy Mother, a different deity that the cult wor uh, worships. Mm -hmm. 
So that one little note, one little note, very short and simple, but it, there's a lot to kind of draw from it. I wonder what was going on here. Here's a reused prop from Silent Hill 3. This is where you get the, uh, when you get the empty bottle in the underpass and you fill it with oil. This is a, the same model heater that you get the oil from. And we've got pages of the cult's, one of the cult's documents. It's falling apart and I can't even read most of the pages. Here's a part I can read. James Sunderland emote? Maybe one day stealth. Maybe one day. Smoke coffee. Uh, I don't recommend that. Smoking is bad, okay? It's time for bed. All right, have a good night here, Amy. Take it easy, man. Think you mean good morning? Eh, whatever. It's when you go to bed is good night. It's fine. All right. So we've got some information here on the cult's ritual. The second sign. And God said, offer the blood of the ten sinners in the white oil. So I mentioned earlier uh, Walter having the ability to do all of this, to be dead and still affecting the real world, living people, um, creating these dream worlds, being able to pull people into them. Um... He's able to do all of that thanks to the first half of this ritual, which involves the first ten victims, a.k.a. the blood of the ten sinners, and the white oil, which is a ritual item that we are familiar with from Silent Hill 2's rebirth ending, uh, an item known as white chrism. Be then released from the bonds of the flesh and gain the power of heaven. From the darkness and void, bring forth gloom, and gird thyself with despair for the giver of wisdom. So, a lot of stuff to talk about from this passage. Be then released from the bonds of the flesh, and gain the power of heaven. So, the first part of the ritual, gather up the, the blood of the ten sinners in the white oil, the first ten victims, the white chrism. Be then released from the bonds of the flesh. So, this was Walter's suicide. He himself is the eleventh victim, as we saw uh, the coffin, his actual grave, uh, back in the forest world. Um, and gain the power of heaven after this. So after he became the eleventh victim and took his own life, he gained the power of heaven. He essentially had the power of Silent Hill. He had the same capabilities that the town had where it can blur the line between reality and unreality as the note in Silent Hill 2 puts it he can create these dream worlds and, and be capable of all of this thanks to this part of the ritual now to continue with this uh, notice there are capitalized words throughout the rest of this passage from the darkness and void bring forth gloom with despair and the giver of wisdom. Uh, each of these are the representatives uh, that are part of this ritual. So the first several of Walter's victims coincide with these elements. So darkness, void, um, gloom, despair. These are all referring to particular victims of Walter's. Um, most notable out of these is the giver of wisdom. That's Joseph Schrieber himself. The third sign, and God said, return to the source through sin's temptation. Uh, source we're about to find actually is Jasper. Sin's temptation, that's Cynthia. Under the watchful eye, watchful is Andrew DeSalvo. We'll see him later. 
uh, Eye of the Demon, Wander Alone in the Formless Chaos, Chaos is Richard Braintree. Only then will the four atonements be in alignment. So this is the remainder of Walter's victims. These are the ones that we are going to encounter uh, throughout Henry's interactions. So you, we can already see there's like smoke coming from the door and screaming can be heard. Jasper's not having a great time in there. Something is not right. Just like with Cynthia, there's a plate on the door. The source placard. The placard with a symbol referring to their role in the sacrifice. It shows a baby and says source. news report. In a forest near Silent Hill, the burned corpse of a 30-year-old male was discovered earlier today. The police have ruled it a homicide and are investigating. The numbers 17121 were reportedly carved into the man's body. Due to the marks on the victim, the police are investigating possible links to the Walter Sullivan case 10 years ago. So we now have our 17th victim. Jasper Gain, represented as Source. He finally met the one the nosy guy talked about, the devil. <clears throat> nope, just Walter. He's a bad dude, but... He's also just kind of got a tragic history, like... His parents didn't want him. He was abandoned, and he had the misfortune of going to an orphanage run by a crazy cult. Talk about shitty life situation. Yeah, the Robbie balloon. It's been out there a couple times already. This is the superintendent. Are you in there, Henry? Help me! There's something wrong with this room! Help! Let me out of here! Is anybody home? What's going on here? All right, Regulus, have a good night. something in there. Yeah. That sound. It's the same one as back then. So Frank is familiar with this. This is something that has happened before. He's He recognizes this scenario. And... Regulus, uh, to answer your question, I really don't know. As said, the, the 
the distance that they seem to describe as being a half day's drive seems way too far away for it to be connected to like the same subway system as Silent Hill 3 with Portland and Silent Hill and like all of that being somewhat connected <clears throat> it's it's hard to know like the actual distances between these places um for example St. Jerome's Hospital is the the hospital that Walter Sullivan was sent to we don't know where that is in relation to Ashfield and South Ashfield and why a baby that's abandoned in this area sent to that hospital would wind up at an orphanage so far away I don't know but we do have one more bloody handprint there one more victim oh yeah dark healer we've already covered it Welcome. Let's check on Eileen. Or not, if she's not around. Too many kills is bad? What are you talking about, Shifty? Killing is bad. And wrong. It's badong. All right, so the hole is growing in size even more. The hole has changed again, and I think I can hear children's voices. Not creepy at all. Heading to the next segment of Walter's memory. One of the most disturbing, in my opinion, the water prison. This area freaked me out more than any other area the first time I played this game. From now on, Henry stands for the opposite of Badong. Gnadab. So there's a, uh, there's a man who's locked up in one of these cells, currently yelling, screaming, get me out of here. This is Andrew DeSalvo. Um, he worked for the cult as one of the guards for the water prison. The water prison here is a magical place where the cult would send the children who were misbehaving or just not following their teachings uh, well enough. And several children were sent here pretty much to their deaths. Uh, some of them, however, would be essentially forced into reading uh, and practicing rituals and things that are required uh, by the cult. And DeSalvo is the asshole who worked as a guard and mistreated the kids who were sent here. Out of all of Walter's victims, he's one of the ones who definitely uh, really deserves it, in my opinion. Graffiti still looks like a kid's writing. I'm being watched from the middle room. So the kids are being watched. You can see... It's a cylindrical prison with individual rooms. 
that can rotate around the center. And it has these portholes so that a single guard, many times uh, Andrew DeSalvo himself, can peer in and watch the children. You can see there's even a shadow moving across the light to symbolize what Walter remembers being locked up in these cells uh, and constantly seeing these things, the images of shadows moving past and footsteps and people watching him constantly. Psylocke, five quick and awesome months. Definitely quick. Definitely quick. It doesn't feel like it's already been that long, but... Psylocke, thank you so much for the resub. Appreciate that support. Yes, Panopticon is the term used for this type of prison. And it is uh, actually something used in, in reality. It's based on uh, actual prison designs, uh, some of which I believe are still in use today. Not very commonly. Get me the hell out of here. Get me out. There's a sloppily written note on the ground. Lucky, I finally escaped from the cell. I decided to take a careful look around this building. The scariest place was the first floor basement. There's a kitchen in the northeast, but next door in the northwest is a death chamber. To get in there, you have to punch in the right numbers... I don't know the numbers, and it was too dark to even see the panel, so I didn't go in. Uh, oh yeah, let me point something out about the map really quickly. Notice as we've been going through these areas, I'm not like... In previous playthroughs, story playthroughs, I would stop and usually pick up a map, kind of when I entered an area. Um, you don't do that in this game. You have to explore, and in Henry's notebook, he's essentially drawing out his own map as he explores things. And uh, I really like that concept, the idea that he's just kind of uh, drawing everything out as he goes. Rather than just picking up a convenient map for this area. Oh, there's Andrew locked oh what's that you want to gently brush my hair over my ear kill me. Kill me. I mean I don't know you but you have such gentle eyes I'll do what I can Andrew I'll try to set you free These leech-like enemies. These actually get bigger and become a little bit more of a nuisance. Broken. A note and a noose. And again, someone... The representation of someone watching from the middle... Something's written. I'm sick of being watched. Again, these are children that were sent here. And toadstools, as they're referred to in the Brady Games Guide. These represent elongated umbilical cords with undeveloped, underdeveloped fetuses forming the head of the mushroom on top. Again, a lot of symbolism around Walter's birth and separation from umbilical cord. Uh, time spent in the womb, uh, general pregnancy and birth themes tend to carry throughout the entire game, as it's obviously a 
core part of Walter's psychosis. Here, take this. Dark Healer, thank you for the 85 bits. No kappa. Much appreciated. I mean it. Four of these that are locked or broken. And the rest we've explored. We've got Andrew locked away. And he is talking about Walter. He knows Walter's going to kill him. He already kind of knows what's going on. The fact that he uh, worked for the cult, he may have some understanding of... The situation he's in, being involved with Walter, especially when we see his reaction to Kid Walter later. A sloppily written note. To get to the surveillance rooms in the middle of this complex, you have to use the corpse disposal chutes in the cells. <clears throat> However, on the first and second floors, these cells are locked. That's so the kids wouldn't discover them. So you have to get to the first floor from one of the cells on the third floor. I know how to do it, but it's really a pain. Also, the lights only work on the third floor. Because why would it be designed in a sensical manner? This is... Silent Hill. Um, I don't need to go back yet. Well, I'm going to go ahead and go back now and see if there's anything new in the apartment. Might as well. I think there is actually some notes under the door that spawn once you uh, visit Water Prison. Let's see what's going on out here. This guy's still stomping around. Uh, Braintree is laying there sleeping. That person is pressed up against the window, looking out at people as well. There's some static on the TV. I don't remember turning this on. Even when I turn the power off, the screen stays on. Keep that in mind. This isn't technically a haunting yet. It's not like a proper haunting. But it's one of the first more heavy-handed signs that things are slowly deteriorating here in the apartment. And the fact that this starts once you go to the water prison world, there will be a link between the victim from this world, Andrew DeSalvo, and this staticky TV haunting later on when it becomes a proper haunting. Special place advertisement for Silent Hill again. Come to Silent Hill for the ultimate peaceful getaway. What's up, Prince Vegeta? Welcome. Glad you could find it. It's a nice little corner of the internet. I like it. I'm glad you're enjoying it. And everybody else who's here hanging out, enjoying the stream. 
appreciate you spending your time here with me. It means a lot. You could be doing all sorts of other stuff, watching many other people on Twitch, and instead you're spending your time here with me. It means a lot. And I'm glad you guys are enjoying the channel and the stream. Oh yeah, see? There's Braintree, sleeping. This was the guy who was stomping around. I don't know what he's doing now. This woman getting up and looking out the window. And sitting down. That's a little kid climbing around on the furniture. In that one. It's like climbing over the couch. Oh my god. What are those two people doing? It's a guy in a striped shirt. I think he's getting his dick sucked. It looked like he was for a little bit. He leaned back. Hold on. Oh, I left and then went back in and it's already changed. Yeah, see those little kids playing around on the furniture there still? There's nobody in this apartment now. Someone down there rolling around on their bed. They're tossing and turning in their sleep. Brain tree still sleeping soundly. Perhaps already in Walter's world. While he dreams. Just the same way Henry wakes up from a dream every time we exit Walter's world. One would presume that his physical body is staying where it is, here in the apartment. So, Richard, we could be seeing his physical body there sleeping while his mind is in Walter's dream already. There's a scrap of red paper stuck in here. Lately, I've been feeling like my life is in serious danger. I've been through a lot in my life, but I've never felt this kind of pure animal fear. In case something happens to me, I've decided to write down what I've learned for whoever you are that's living in the apartment now. I've been investigating the mass murder that took place seven years ago in which ten people were killed in ten days. They were killed in a variety of ways, but the one thing they had in common was that each corpse had the following numbers in order of their deaths carved into them. 1 of 21, 2 of 21, and so on. The name of their killer, it was carved in as well. His name was Walter Sullivan. April 4th. So he's still putting together the number significance at this point. Uh, as well as pinning down the name of the killer, Walter Sullivan. As said, we get to watch the progression. Oh my god! The bees are chasing Eileen! Even though you can't, like, see anything. She's, like, freaking out. Alright. Ouch! Damn it. Where the hell am I? <laughs> PJ Skillet, thank you for the three months. Welcome back. Appreciate the continued support. Three months, baby. Love you, bro. Keep it up. Oh, we're keeping it up. Giggity. And we're staying up entirely too late. This will be a full playthrough, by the way. All in one sitting. We're not going to split this up. It's just... It's not, not one of the things I like doing with story playthroughs. I feel like if I try to split it up between multiple streams, everything that I explained the first night 
will kind of fall on deaf ears the second night. Like, I'll just be repeating myself. And constantly playing last time on Dragon Ball Z. Alright. So that's locked. And this is kind of interesting the way they have this layout. Um, you've got a ladder, which is definitely the best way of getting down here. Because otherwise you have to deal with these fucking wall men again. Nobody wants that shit. And unless you're going for kills, which... If you're doing like 10 star or 10.2 star uh, rank playthrough, which I don't care about my rank on this playthrough, just I'm just going for the sake of story. Um, you can go that way and get some extra wallmen kills, but if you're just trying to get down here and see the rest of your places to go, you can just use the ladders and completely forego all of those wallmen. Eileen must be a really strange neighbor to have. I feel like Henry's somewhat strange as well, but... I don't know. Everybody in the apartment building is, uh... Shall we say, unique. They are some real human beings. Previously on Battlestar Galactica. I don't know what that is, Yoshio. I feel like I'm missing out. It's a key. We got the water prison exit key. Key found in the water wheel room, second floor basement. Up is carved into it. There's something written on the plate. To turn on the lights on the third floor cells, turn this water wheel. Remember that the water must flow in the direction of the water wheel. Of course, you also have to open the sluice gate on the roof. Copy the water wheel room plate message. So we can go open up that sluice gate. Yo, Nico. Nico, thank you for the sub. Appreciate the support. Thank you so much. Can't open it very wide. I really like this hallway when you compare it uh, the first time you visit Water Prison and then when you uh, come back to this area later because the perspective fucks with you. Like, they completely changed this hallway's uh, actual dimensions later on. Because it looks like it's a long hallway, you know with a normal sized door, but as you approach it, it's a much bigger area than you realize and in like a gigantic door. However, when you visit later, it's a properly perspectived hallway with a normal sized door and a shit ton of angry twin victim enemies, but we'll deal with that when we get to it later. I know later on we see the greedy worm in this area. For now it doesn't appear. Um, sure. I'm going to use every hole that goes back to the apartment just for the sake of constantly checking things at the apartment that can po that can change. Just kind of doing my rounds of checking windows, checking people, looking for notes. Uh, yeah. Checking on the neighbors. Doing all their weird shit. Use every hole.
Live life to the fullest. Use all the holes. Hawk. Hawk. My log has a message for you. Thank you for the sub. Really appreciate all the support, guys. Thank you so much, Hawk. She's still fighting the bees. She almost looks like she's going into a martial arts pose when she starts backing up the other way. It looks like she's doing like a Bruce Lee kung fu pose. Let's go ahead and save as well. Kata stands. <laughs> oh, hey. Just like I thought, the power's blown. Interesting. The TV stopped. The static stopped. And now the news. Yesterday, Wally, Wally the walrus, walrus again. A time resident of the Springfield Zoo gave birth to a healthy baby walrus pup named It sucks Buttercup. that these repeat so often that there's not more variety to them. Tried watching the new Twin Peaks. I'm so lost, so confused. Good. Watch it again and again. And then watch it some more and try to figure it out. You have to try. David Lynch does not make it easy on you to understand his work. Much like Team Silent does not make it easy on you to understand these games, like... There's a lot of elements to them that are a bit more obvious and, and that you can kind of follow, but there's a lot of really subtle things that are easy to miss and uh, require kind of a, a bit of a deeper analysis to really understand. A lot of Lynch's works are like that. Uh, probably a huge influence on the way Team Silent approached a lot of the storytelling in the game. We got second floor. Broken lock. Some more toadstools. What other horror games do I stream? On the regular, mostly just Silent Hill. I speed run them, I do story playthroughs, and, and yeah, I play like almost every game in the series are all the ones that I can get my hands on which is like all the main console ones except for PT I guess and Book of Memories um, I do the occasional other game I like a lot of horror games so I just don't really focus on streaming a whole lot else like regularly Silent Hill is always kind of the main focus, but, like, I did a playthrough of Until Dawn not long ago. Uh, I've got a playthrough of The Last of Us in progress, which I'm going to pick back up and finish in October. Um, I play the Resident Evil games, just, you know, not as often. And I still have yet to play Resident Evil 7. Um, pretty much October is going to be the month for playing all the other horror games. Uh, October is when I take my break from Silent Hill and play all the horror games I need to catch up on. So that's going to be Resident Evil 7. That's going to be Outlast 2. Um, that's going to be White Day. Maybe some more of the Fatal Frame games if I can get them in time. 
a bunch of stuff. A lot of things planned for October. It's a diary. I've been watching the surveillance room's peephole the whole time, and sometimes he's there. I can tell because I see a shadow move or hear his footsteps. Dead space? Maybe dead space. I always have more games than days in October that I want to get to. So obviously I can't get to everything that I want to, but... October, I'm going to try and stream almost every day if I can for that month. And try to do longer streams just to get through as many games as I can possibly squeeze in to my available time. Graffiti doesn't look like it was written by an adult. Picking my nose a lot. All right. Some bottles filled with black powder. So this is something that I wound up learning about through Metal Gear Solid, of all things. Um, in Metal Gear Solid 2, Raiden, a.k.a. Jack, uh, it's revealed that in his past was a child soldier, and he was kept drugged and sort of controllable, uh, along with the other child soldiers, by being fed gunpowder and having it mixed in with their food. And potentially... This could be a reference to something similar happening here with these bottles of black powder uh, that are around. And specifically, I bring that up as a potential alternative because you would think that the cult at this point would probably still be using White Claudia and PTV. But PTV is not a black powder. Uh in its drug form, so... I don't know. That's my assumption. On what these bottles are supposed to be with the black powder in them. And what they could possibly infer. Why gunpowder? It had a particular chemical in it that would cause uh, a, a hallucinations and just kind of a drugged state if ingested. Of course, it was also toxic, you know, but... Uh, there's something written on paper. Still looks like a kid's writing. I peed in my pants. I gotta wash them so nobody finds out. Oh, I just saw a shadow. I think someone saw me. Death by pee pants. It's a rough way to go. That's a bad time. So there we go. Books scattered everywhere. Can't seem to interact with any of them. We got some more graffiti here. I'm a boy genius, and I figured out the answer to the surveillance room puzzle. It's light and water. A little bit of a hint to the things you need to take care of to get through this area. And hey... It's our introduction to the twin victims. So this is one of my favorite enemy designs in like Silent Hill overall. So unlike all of Walter's other victims, uh, the two children that he killed, Billy and Miriam Locaine, instead 
haunt his world as these creatures. The twin victims. It's two children's heads covered in like a mangled tarp with long matted hair growing into it. And they don't seem to have like legs or more much of their lower body. And they walk around on uh, large hands and point at you and they actually whisper at you as well. They call you the receiver of wisdom as that is Henry's role in Walter's ritual. And the idea of its appearance, like the idea behind its appearance, is that it's the remains of these two victims who were chopped into pieces with an axe, as we learn in Silent Hill 2 even, uh, by Walter Sullivan. It's basically the remaining pieces of them mashed together into these creatures. And there's a hole. So, from here, we can see that there's a room below us that was locked from the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in and see what's in that room. Another hole. So that at least marks it on the map. Door is broken though, so you can't open it. You can see the shadow still passing in front of the people in front of each of the cell rooms. Another drop. Another marked hole on the map and another door with a broken lock. Nothing in here either. Here's the twin victims, just to show you them. Oh, you can hear them whispering and calling you receiver. Definitely one of the most disturbing enemies in the Silent Hill games, in my opinion. All right, we'll come back to this. We unlock this door. I'm going to finish checking those rooms. We still have to make our way to the roof and open up the sluice gate. Why do the twins try to kill you? Because once they're dead, once these victims have been claimed by Walter, uh, they're part of Walter's world. They're they're haunting that realm. They're they're just trying to continue on. Like they don't have their own will anymore at that point. Um, outside of maybe Joseph Schreiber. And it's not even really his own will. It's his role in the ritual to be the giver of wisdom, which is why he gives wisdom to the receiver of wisdom, a.k.a. Henry. But they're essentially in control by, uh, by Walter. They're part of his nightmare and part of what he's created here. And Walter... He wants, he wants to finish his, his ritual. Hey, Roxy. There's something written on the paper. Now it will look like I'm sleeping. Huh? Were those footsteps? I wonder if they saw me. Laying their clothes out, trying to fool the guard. So 
some handgun bullets if I... Ah, it's already not worth it. I hate Wallman. Couple more to check. No, don't. Okay. Alright, lumber slowly towards me. That worked out. Nub confirmed this for me. I heard they weren't able to be turned into ghosts because of their purity. Uh, most likely. All of the rest of Walter's victims all seem to be involved with, you know, more going on with the cult, uh, where some of them could be still considered innocent, but not the same way as children. Children seem to be viewed as a different kind of innocent by the spiritual powers that are Silent Hill, much like Laura not being affected by the nightmare at all in Silent Hill 2. Um... So it would make sense that they aren't tormented to exist as ghosts, but instead, I don't know, this existence as that creature isn't much better. Um, but yeah, that is definitely a common th theory. There's nothing, I think, to really verify it one way or the other, but it, it makes sense that the children would be manifested in Walter's world as something other than the ghosts of all of the rest of Walter's victims. What is this place? This is the Water Prison, a prison used by the cult of Silent Hill uh, to brainwash, torture, torment, and otherwise ship off to die uh, small children. Will I play The Suffering? I've played it before. I might stream it at some point. It's a diary. I'm in trouble. I stood in front of the surveillance room and yelled as loud as I could, but nobody came out. Imagine being locked in here and people stop watching you and letting you out, which is what happened to a lot of these kids. A diary. We had beef stew yesterday. In the cafeteria, I heard there's a death chamber behind the kitchen, and they take meat straight from the dead people and cook it. That really scared me. So there, there is a death chamber, and they are taking meat from the dead kids and using it to feed the other kids. There are clothes lying here. There's graffiti here. Looks like a kid's writing. I got no clothes on. Again, we see a door marked with the halo of the sun. Door won't open. Seems like it's locked from the inside. And that'll be... The the fact that it's marked with the halo of the sun is significant. Again, uh, it's kind of a way that these individual worlds are connected within Walter's mind. And it will be used when we revisit these areas later. There's a handle here. So this is the sluice gate we need to open on the roof. And then we can go back down to the central part of the water prison that we unlocked earlier. Thought the thing was an interesting Xbox game. Don't think I would call it survivor hor survival horror, though. I mean, the thing was interesting, and it was alright for what it was. Um, the problem... Like... I was actually talking uh, to my friend uh, Jubes about this recently. We were, we were discussing, like, horror properties and things that could be converted into game licenses and kind of how... What would be an interesting way to make them, you know? Like, if you were tasked to make a game based around the thing, how would you do it? And... Um, One of the ideas that we, we started kind of like kicking back and forth was 
imagine it being like an asymmetrical multiplayer type of game, uh, almost like Dead by Daylight or Friday the 13th, except uh, everybody is a human. You just don't know who's a host. And uh, imagine there's several different mechanics that kind of focus around trusting each other and people each uh, each other's decisions and trying to work out who's a host and not get infected yourself or anything like that and if you do get affected or infected by someone else trying to hide it from the other players uh so if you have like say two units of health and you can spend one unit of health to take a test to prove if you're infected or not but you might want to just keep your two units of health in case things start going badly and you want to survive. So you would be like, hey, I want to subject you to this test to prove that you're in not a host. And I'd be like, no, I, I would much rather keep my health. And you start raising paranoia between the players. It'd be a fun way to do it. It's a shame, you know, the actual game wasn't anything like that. If I got to make a thing game, that's how I would want to do it. Sounds like Deception. Game was called Deceive. Pandemic. Oh, man. Apparently, this is like a lot of things that already exist. Deceit. Yeah, based on John Carpenter's The Thing. Is this a StarCraft mod? No, I'm just kind of talking about an interesting idea. If this is a thing that already exists, apparently it is. Anyway, document here. I'm sleepy. So we're playing on hard mode, and that actually takes away some information that the game gives you. Uh, normally you get a much more in-depth bit of note here about uh, somebody talking to a chief explaining uh, how to rotate the rooms and line up the holes, uh, which they use as corpse disposal chutes. That's how you know that they're dumping the bodies of the kids down into the area where they uh, prepare the food and feed it to the other kids. Uh, all of that information comes from these notes that are hints on how to solve these puzzles. But when you're on hard mode, all you get is I'm sleepy. You don't get a hint. But with in losing the hint... You're also losing some of the uh, story. Which, a lot of times when I play this game and do story playthroughs, I will intentionally play on easy uh, just to keep these notes intact. But it's been a while since I've done a hard playthrough of this game. And I figured, why not? We can see the view from the center of all of these rooms that we examined. What it looks like from that point of view. And more importantly, you can see where there are rooms with holes in them. Since we're going to need to line up a few particular rooms here. There's a document here. I want to go home. Another note that's normally much more involved and tells a lot more, but because it's a hint towards solving the puzzle um, and just kind of solving the area in general, it's left out in hard mode and you get no info. All right, it's bedtime. All right, Zig. Have a great night. Thank you for hanging out. Okay, so there's a handle here, and regardless of difficulty, the solution for this is always the same. Uh, you'll want to rotate this valve four times. It actually doesn't matter which direction you spin it. Whoops.
Hey, doodle. And then we want to go up. And the way that you would figure this out is just by going around, uh, looking through each of the peepholes, seeing which rooms have the holes in them based on the ones that you've marked on your map. Some kind of memo. Secret number for getting through the door uh, in the back of the kitchen this month is 0302. Thanks for your cooperation. Again, these worlds that we're in are not, we're not physically here. These are places mentally created by Walter. And because of that, a lot of other aspects of Walter seep into the sort of creation of these worlds, such as the code for getting into this kitchen is 0302. The room that Walter was born in that he believes is his mother is room 302. The apartment that Henry currently lives in. So that significance of that number is so important to Walter that it bleeds through into his representations of these places. And we just need to rotate this uh, floor to the right twice. Uh, the first time we'll unlock Andrew DeSalvo's cell. And then the second time we'll align everything the way we need it. Genuinely want to know more about Walter's parents. You and me both. You and me both. All we get are a couple very, very small bits of info from Frank Sunderland's diaries, talking about them a little bit, and from uh, Walter's vague memories uh, that you, when you're interacting with uh, his father, essentially, at the end or his father's corpse, or whatever it's supposed to be, you hear little voice clips of Walter's father uh, to get an idea of kind of what was going on, but not a lot of information on them. Horror games to watch? I mean... I don't know. What games do you like? What types of games do you like? I'm more of a, like, <laughs> play Silent Hill on Dubs' channel. I mean, I didn't want to say it, but figured someone would. I'm trying to think of, like, what's, what, I don't know. Silent Hill games. Silent Hill games are good to watch. Good horror games are fun to watch, I bet. No, the movies are totally separate from the games with Silent Hill. the center of their religion and that kid Walter he was really into that mumbo jumbo especially that descent of the Holy Mother business oh, it's scary oh god oh oh 
my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. So I mentioned Andrew DeSalvo's reaction to seeing Walter. And again, he sort of, he realizes how much shit he's in. The fact that he's here. He knows he's dead. He knows Walter's brought him here to kill him. He's part of this ritual. Um, Norm, would I ever play Animal Crossing or something else as Fluffy? Sure. Um, I haven't played an Animal Crossing game in a long time, but I don't see why not. I, I think I'm, as the stream goes on, a little bit more variety. I'm, I'm always still going to kind of focus on being a horror streamer. It's just one of the things that I've kind of established myself as. And honestly, it's one of my favorite genres to go through and stream. But um, I'm not like exclusively a, a, a horror guy. Uh, I, I play a lot of variety of games off stream and in general. And... Uh, for example, like I'm a big fan of Jet Set Radio. That's one that I play that's very bright and colorful and happy and has an amazing soundtrack. So yeah. Possibly in the future. I might do some more stuff like that. I've considered playing through some other various things on the channel that are, like, unrelated to anything else I typically stream. I'm a big Final Fantasy fan, and I've never streamed any Final Fantasy or other types of, like, RPGs um, on the channel. So I could do that at some point. Um... Stuff like Animal Crossing, Pokemon games. There's a lot of Pokemon games I haven't played. I kind of fell out of handhelds by, like, the f very early DS, like, first kind of wave of DS games is when I stopped really being in the mindset of playing and having a whole lot of handheld stuff. So, at some point, I might get, get a bunch of games like that and kind of catch up on them. Stream Souls games. I've streamed every Souls game. Except for <laughs> Dark Souls 2. I've played and beaten Dark Souls 2 several times, but uh, I've, I've not streamed it. But everything else, uh, I've, already, I've already streamed full playthroughs of all of the Souls stuff. And Bloodborne. Zelda games. I'm a huge Zelda fan as well. I would love to do Link to the Past. I would love to do Link's Awakening. Link's Awakening is my favorite Zelda game. Hands down. And I'm supposed to borrow Breath of the Wild from my friend Hirimi at some point. So, it's time to see Andrew DeSalvo's fate. He knew he was going to die to Walter. He already called it. And sure enough, here's a plate on the door, just like we saw with um, Cynthia, just like we saw with Jasper. Now we have the watchfulness placard, uh, linking watchfulness to Andrew's role in the ritual. And again, their roles are significant in their relationship with Walter. Andrew was representing watchfulness and is actually the guard who watched Walter while he was here in the prison and uh, who mistreated him. And let's see what happened to Andrew.
We have our 18th victim. Only three left for Walter to complete the 21 sacraments. Three victims remain. Streamed the Bioshock series? No, uh, I have not. I've played Bioshock 1, I've played Bioshock 2, uh, finished both of those. Um, it's been a while since I played either one, but went through those uh, and, and enjoyed them both. Never played Infinite, so that would be a blind playthrough to do at some point. So he locked himself into the room to stop killing. What are you talking about, Segaku? You're referring to Andrew being inside of the cell? No, Walter was holding him there. He didn't. Andrew didn't lock himself in there. He wouldn't lock himself in there and then say, Get me out. Get me out of here. Walter's going to kill me. The room with all the locks... Henry, no, Henry is here locked in the apartment room by Walter, not himself. He's trapped. He doesn't know what's going on with the ritual yet. He doesn't know that until he gets all that information from Joseph uh, gradually. can hear the shower head spraying out from outside and there's now blood all over the bathroom blood it's stained with blood it smells horrible just like that water filled room under the cylindrical prison so elements of walter's world all of these places that we're visiting are starting to affect this area this bit of reality around room 302 it's being very messed up by Walter's influence hey nurse Harley I'm doing well how did Walter kill the last guy it's implied that he's drowned Water isn't running in the toilet either. There's some serious noises coming out of the hole. I'll be back to that. Uh, we got some notes to read. Got some peepholes to look at. Oh. How's it going with room 302? Well, I uh, just tried to open it up. But it looks like something uh, blocking it from the inside. Oh. Anyway, it's not the first time. You mean the guy who lived here before? And it wasn't just him either. There's uh, something wrong with his whole apartment. That's some weird shit to try to forget, Frank. Why did you keep that umbilical cord? 
That's a weird thing to do, man. But that's Frank letting on that... This is not the first time weird stuff happened in 302. The Walter Sullivan thing happened decades ago when he was born and abandoned here. And then after that, several years, as a child, Walter would return. As an adult, Walter returned. He was constantly around here, constantly trying to come back to room 302, which he viewed as his mother. We see that new handprint there representing Andrew DeSalvo's death in the 21 sacraments and we got some notes um master yoshi let me catch up on chat here master yoshi when will the apartment have the perma perma haunting happen there's no such thing as a perma haunting none of the hauntings in this game are permanent every haunting that occurs can be removed uh with a holy candle uh, or a saint medallion and all of the hauntings occur after the halfway point of the game which is the hospital so another note from joseph i found something that's extremely effective against the ghosts it saved my life it was stuck into the huge rock in the woods near the orphanage it's a sword blade with a handmade triangle-shaped wooden handle that has some kind of spell written on it. As a weapon, it's heavy and hard to carry, but somehow it seems to change in response to the ghost victim power. Uh, strike when the sword is energized. If you don't reduce their power, your attacks will be repelled. As far as I know, there are only five swords in existence with that kind of power. It's extremely valuable. July 23rd. So, the ghosts themselves, as said, are not killable. But these swords that Joseph has discovered here, he realized, uh, have the ability to pin ghosts and essentially render them uh, unable to pursue you uh, so that at the very least you don't have to deal with them throughout an area. However, you're limited to five of these swords that you can pick up in a single playthrough, and there are more than that uh, many ghosts. So you kind of have to pick and choose how to utilize each one. Where the hell am I? <laughs> Rungarian, thank you for the six months in a row. Much appreciated. Weird stuff happens all the time in room 237. Or er, 302. You got it. <laughs> room 1408, you mean? <laughs> thank you so much for the resub. Appreciate the continued support, my friend. How far am I into the game? Uh, Fabian, we... Uh, let's see. We just finished up Water Prison. Um, we've still got Building World. We've still got Apartment World. We've still got Hospital. And then the second half of the game. So we're about, like, 35%. We're not very far, actually. we still got a lot of game left. Scrap of red paper stuck here. Stained with blood and I can't read it. Awesome. That's what uh, happens when Frank tries to slip something up under the door. It gets distorted through Walter's influence. Maintaining our cutoff from any other kind of contact. Go ahead and put that away. Take this. <laughs> Enigma, thank you for the spooky bits. 302 spooky bits. Thank you so much, Enigma. Much appreciated. I'll have to really think about what I'm going to do for my alerts during Halloween. Because I'm going to be playing way too many games to do custom themes for all of it, but... I definitely want to have some Halloween-themed alerts and stuff this year, I think. So we can really have some spooky bits. Maybe I can get some cheer modes done 
before then. Hmm, we shall see. Oh yeah, reminder. We do still have building world. We do still have uh, apartment world where once we get to the hospital uh, and we begin the... Once we begin the escort half of the game, the official start of the second half of the game, um, that is when I will take a look at the results on the straw poll and determine what ending I'm going to be going for. So if you have not already voted... You can type exclamation point poll and get a link to the straw poll and vote for which ending you want me to go for. I will be showing one of four of the endings that you can get in the game as it is. And I will also be showing an extra ending. So there was originally supposed to be a UFO ending for Silent Hill 4. Uh, elements of the UFO ending still lingered about in the game's coding, as some fans discovered. And um, I have a little surprise revolving around that that I'll also be showing at the end of the game. Oh yeah, did I look at Eileen's room yet? Oh, she's watching TV and laughing. <laughs> and she has that weird... Like choking sound when she's laughing. That high-pitched sound. I have awoken! Welcome back. Pantsu, you pervert. <laughs> That's spooky. Hey, Mr. M. It's going pretty great. She's watching Seinfeld. That'd be great. Add in the faint, like, Seinfeld bass going on in the background. She's like a fucking seal. This is like the Sims animation. A little bit. It does. It kind of reminds me of uh, of the Sims. Like sitting and repeating their animations. I'm trying to let this run because it will eventually end. Where she gets up and like moves away where you can't see her. But I think it's random. I don't think it's on like a timer or anything. <laughs> it's just kind of like random which animations she'll do out of a particular pool of animations. Oh, there she goes, like staring at the hole again. She's gone mental. Gotta put her down. We'll do what we can to prevent her from going too mental. Depending on... <laughs> What ending wins this poll, I guess. Just finished playing some Sims 3. Nice, Masters. Okay. Seen enough. Do we got any more notes behind the shelf? No? Radio? Nothing. Since we're about to go to Building World, we're about to go interact with our friend Richard Braintree, who we can see here still sleeping. 
despite the fact that these other residents kind of like changed up their animations and what they're doing, also notice how much time is passing as we go through essentially a single day here. All of that, all of this is occurring. You can see like it's it's just now starting to get dusk. And we can see Braintree across the way, right there, in his blue shirt, sleeping in bed, already in Walter's world. So let's go see what he's up to. The hole's even bigger now. There's a lot of noise coming from the inside the hole. Good typo. Let's go. I like how there's just like a door up there that just kind of like goes to nothing. Just like a bright white light. And we've got a hole back to the room right from the very start. Right from the very beginning of where we are. Let's go ahead and go back. So if people die in this world, what happens to them in the real world? They die. Their body in the real world dies the same way. They have numbers carved into their body. And their spirit remains trapped in Walter's world as a ghost. Oh. Better check on your neighbor soon. Written in blood over the handprints. We're getting some very distinct messages from Walter now. More than just letting us know how far along he is in the ritual. just came back you restarted no we are still going you just visit this room a lot <laughs> it's understandable to be confused rob eileen looks confused as well i like how she sometimes kind of quickly turns. Oh. Didn't want to see that. Wonder what she's watching now. That is some weird porn. Hardcore hentai. Her animations are different, though. She's not watching something funny. Oh, look, she's leaning towards the hole now. New animation. A little more like she notices it. And then just kind of, eh, whatever. Back to... 
Backdoor Sluts 9. She's watching Corky Romano. God, Kalatis. Never gonna live that down. Getting much from the radio anymore. Nothing else going on too bad here. Oh, look at that. I checked on Eileen. It said, better check on your neighbor soon. Written in blood on the wall, I checked on her, came back, the writing is gone. What's up, Roller? Oh, did you see it? Andrew DeSalvo's head. Just fell past this window. As I was approaching it. It was only there for a second. Somebody clip that. I wonder if it'll happen again. I might have to like. Leave and come back. Let me see if I can see it in the bedroom. But yeah, Andrew DeSalvo's head will start floating past the window. Kind of randomly. Hopefully we get a chance to catch it later. Playing some air guitar. That guy just spazzing out, yeah. Stood up and had a seizure. Maybe. So you learn a little bit about the people who live in the apartment as well. Like, they all kind of have their own little quirks and character types and everything. So, like, one guy is a huge audiophile and listens to music and has, like, a huge record collection, all this stuff. So you usually see him, like, dancing around in his apartment. And it's a bit hard to see, but... There are gumhead enemies, monkeys, up above where we're at right here. That are jumping from roof to roof. Uh, crap. But my controls are not configured to adjust my camera up there. Dang it. Oh well. You can hear them. And eventually, once we get up here, you'll also start hearing gunshots. The signs that uh, Richard is fighting them. 
What's that enemy's name? Gumhead. Hey, Marlu, thank you for the host. What's a car doing here? It's all good, Shifty. Have a good night. Take it easy. There's nothing over here. Okay. Monkey jumped through me. It's all fine. And the door is nothing. Not even giving me a broken prompt. All right. Best cutscene in the whole game right here. Richard Braintree has such a cool looking tie. It's like a biblical painting. Spider's web. How far did he fall? Well, the thing is, like, Henry was, like, also jumping through holes in the water prison. So, obviously, physics and things don't work the way that they are supposed to when you're inside Walter's dream worlds, essentially. But that scene still comes off as, like, really funny. Um, notice he also makes mention of the hole. Uh getting here to this crazy world and that strange hole. So he's getting here the same way you are. He's going through a hole to wind up in Walter's world, which is interesting. We see him earlier, so it makes you wonder if at some point did he become trapped in his apartment? Did he... How did, how did he manage to stumble across this hole that brought him here? None of the books in this bookshelf look particularly interesting. And this guy gurgling, being super rude. Let me take a look here. I'm going to tab out. Sorry, it's going to kill the sound. Whoa, why is my connection dipping? That's weird. Let me pull up my victim files here. So we can talk about our new ghost. It's been a while since we've seen a different ghost. Back in Forest World, we saw Steve Garland, who uh, was the ghost in the overalls 
the owner of the pet shop. I believe this is Sane. Sane Martin. One of Jasper's friends. Or, no, 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 no. William Gregory. Owner of the watch and clock store. Actually, see, this is the problem. I wish this was information they put in the games so that you could correctly identify each of these ghosts. Because here in, in the building world, we're going to come across a couple new places. There's a bar. Uh, there's several different stores and things. So I'm looking over the victim list, and it's like victim number 10 is Eric Walsh, who's the bartender here. William Gregory is the owner of the watch and clock store. George Roston, victim number six, was a priest. Rick Albert, the manager of Albert Sports, which is also here. Does that mean Henry is sleeping too? Yes. Every time you uh, come back from Walter's World, Cosma, it's a cutscene of Henry waking up in bed. So his physical body, like, you, it stays there in the real world, essentially, while your mind, spirit, whatever you want to call it, goes into Walter's World. Lydia, thank you for the host. So there's a weird sword stuck in his stomach, and he's holding something in his hand. So we got the ghost's key, which is what we need to open up this door here. But then there's also the sword itself. Now, we can take it out and keep it with us, but then we have to deal with this ghost. He'll get up, and he'll be able to start chasing us, and just like all the other ghosts... They can go through walls, they can pursue you in almost any area, in, in in each world. So, I'm just going to leave this one here. It's already one ghost pinned, that's one less to deal with. And really, there's only one ghost we really need to go through the trouble of pinning. Uh, and that's Andrew DeSalvo, when we encounter him later. What's the advantage of taking the sword? Then you have a sword that you can use on another ghost. So, for example, if there's a different ghost that you find more annoying than that one, you can use the go you can use that sword on them. But I would just as rather have you know, just as much rather have one less ghost to deal with here then save it for any particular ghost later. Bunch of golf clubs in here. Looks like they're all bent and broken. Golf club looks like a five iron, so we got another one of the breakable golf clubs. By the way, the golf clubs that you collect throughout the game all have different stats. Some of them are more damage. Some of them are you know, slightly different, but they do have varying stats. You'll look cool with the sword. You don't get to use it like a regular weapon. It's only for pinning a ghost that's already down. And downing a ghost is no easy task. The easiest way to do it, and the surefire way to do it, is with a silver bullet, of which there are only two to pick up in a, in a playthrough. Um, the other way to do it is to actually just fight ghosts, which... They harm you just by being near them, unless you have saint medallions, 
and uh, holy candles to weaken them. They're a huge, huge pain to fight without silver bullets, so... Pretty much the best thing to do with ghosts is just avoid them. Golf bag, nothing inside. All sorts of sports supplies, nothing particularly interesting. Aluminum bat, sure. Got an aluminum alloy bat, reasonably powerful, easy to use as a weapon. It's not a bad weapon, but you also, in this same area, pick up the hand axe, which is leaps and bounds, like one of the best weapons in the game, as far as general damage and move set. It's like relatively fast. It charges up very quickly. Um, and the charge up attack has a lot of iframes on it where you've got a lot of a very long period of invulnerability. If I could add a world to this game, what would I add? Um, going on the theme earlier about learning more about Walter's parents. Uh... I would like some kind of a some kind of a world maybe a little more associated with them like hmm I don't know let me think what else could potentially be added that would be significant to Walter and isn't already in the game Little Caesar's World. That's a good one, Enigma. Well, in the meantime, while we try to think about that... Oh, God, that's a dog up my ass. Well, it's enough cat food for an army of cats. I found some keys. Uh, Henry is commenting about all of this cat food. Uh, and how there is so much cat food, it's enough for an army of cats. I mentioned earlier, Henry is, you know, he seems like he's a little bit slow at times. This is one of those times. If you look at those boxes on the shelf, yeah, that's a picture of a dog. That is six boxes of dog food. Enough cat food to feed an army of cats, apparently to Henry. Um, but that is six, to, uh, six boxes of dog food. I don't think Henry knows what he's talking about. Ah. Oh, hey. Hello there. So since we're down here next to the clock and watch shop, but we also just went through the pet shop. So which one of Walter's victims is that? That could be... Oh, hold on. One day I'll memorize all of Walter's victims. And it's a shame, like... This is this is all stuff that is super relevant to the game. Obviously, these are your recurring enemies. And yet, all this information was excluded from the actual game. And was only available on the Japanese Konami website when the game came out. What a dumb way to, to tell, like, all this information. So that could be Rick Albert, sports store guy. William Gregory, the watch and clock store. I think that's Will. I think that's William Gregory there that we just went past. What's a bananan? Ananananananananas. You shouldn't feed your cat dog food. Yes, that's true. In a real life situation, 
you should always check with your vet about the proper things your pet should be eating. Make sure to add that to the Silent Hill wiki so that people know that this game teaches improper pet care advice. An upside down clock. Hands aren't moving, doorknobs rusted shut, and I can't get it open. This room is also completely upside down. But we don't need to worry about it this time through. We just have to keep it in mind for when we revisit later. <laughs> what should I do about removing this knife stuck in me, though? I mean, if you've got a first aid kit. Yeah, for those who don't know what I'm referencing when I'm talking about teaching improper pet care advice, uh, on the Silent Hill wiki, which has a lot of absurd, quote-unquote, information that is added to the wiki... Uh, if you look up Silent Hill Homecoming on the on the Silent Hill wiki and scroll down to the trivia uh, section, there's some very good trivia there about Silent Hill Homecoming. Did you know that pulling all of the knives out of Wheeler, which is what you do if you choose to save Wheeler at the end of the game, pulling all the knives out of a stab vi uh, stabbing victim... Um, would complicate the injuries and make things worse, and it's recommended that you leave them in. So don't take your medical advice from Silent Hill Homecoming, everybody. It's a good thing they put that on the wiki. Ever gotten the Sailor Moon costume in Silent Hill 3? Of course. Of course. All you have to do is beat the game once, and then type in Princess Heart in the typewriter. Um, and it's also necessary for several categories of the speedruns and stuff that I do. You need to have that for Heather Beam and Sexy Beam. You have to have that for a, uh, a glitch in the PC version. Actually, it's in the console version too. A glitch where you skip the, uh, the mall. You have to have the Princess Heart outfit. Too, huh? Say, you look a lot like a little punk that I once caught sneaking around there. Do you know something about what's going on? Hey, hey, you! Stop! Oh, shoot. Hey, nubs. Hey, Lulu. What's up? Only thing I ever got from homecoming was disappointment. Yeah. Well... There was a uh, brain tree again. Whoa, whoa. What is happening? Forget it. Why did my keyboard suddenly decide to... <laughs> that was weird. I might have to switch over to my other wired keyboard. I don't know what's been going on with my wireless keyboard. It's been freaking out on me a lot. Richard is great with kids. Yes, isn't he just? Um, trying to think if there's anything else. Yeah, there's some stuff I can go collect. Uh, nothing over here. 
This elevator's not here. Look at these dogs freaking out trying to get me. You'll never get this. You'll never get this. Whoa. Henry started freaking out there, like, aiming between the two of them. <laughs> That's amazing. going some different places. See where the elevator takes us. Just make sure we clear everything out. It was on Marlu's stream. Got modded there. Pretty cool stuff. Nice. Congrats. Um, okay, this is where we were. Where we got on the elevator. And if you notice down there, there's a hole that would lead back to the apartment. Um, and this is actually, and there's also the door with the halo of the sun on it. So when we return to building world, this is where we enter from is down there. And then we've got the other side of the elevator here. Oh, hello again. Large spade. Ordinary spade from the construction site. Looks like it would make an impressive weapon. The shovel. No! Shovel knight. See? Yeah, ghosts are, like, useless to try to fight if you don't have the right things some kind of strange sword. So now we've got another sort of obedience. Well, technically our first sort of obedience. Extremely rare sword. When used against down ghost, it stops them in place. When pulled out, the ghost is revived. We're also almost dead and almost out of inventory. So it's about time to find a way out of here. And I'm going to keep this equipped because look at that run animation when you got the shovel. Let's try the middle button. That one doesn't open. That one doesn't open. Well, that sure narrows it down. drink here, but again, I'm going to try not to use it right now if I don't really need to. If I can make it through the next couple rooms, there will be a hole back to the apartment and I can still heal. Still the first half of the game. We still got like 60% of this game left after this. Or from this point, I should say. In all my life, never randomly come across a three-foot section of pipe with a 90-degree elbow that you see in 10,000 video games. Seriously, uh, we, me and um, an ex-girlfriend, like, we, we cosplayed from Silent Hill as uh, I was Pyramid Head, she was a nurse. And uh, her prop as the nurse was one of the, the steel pipes. And we went out and got, like, a real steel pipe and everything, and we had to get... 
a custom like elbow joint and everything to give it that proper 90 degree. It's not the kind of thing you just find lying around, you know. We had to specifically make it that way. Is this open? Okay, didn't think so. Is this open? Didn't think so. Okay, close, but we've got, there should be a thing right here, uh, where I'll be able to go back to the room. My inventory is full anyway, I just realized. Running the whole game tonight, yep. We are finishing this tonight. Make sure not to step on or get hit by a leech. Okay. Sometimes a leech will fall on you right there. Garbage. Nothing interesting here. Great. Need to be careful not to bump into. Can't hold anymore. I'll be back for that axe. Again, that axe is one of my favorite weapons in the game. Memo here. <coughs> Excuse me. Ooh, excuse me. Sorry, my throat my throat was a little bit rough the last couple days, and I just realized it's been about five hours. I haven't taken a proper break yet, so definitely coming up on a break here. We're we're almost done with this area and then I'll I'll do that. Actually I'll just do that when I go back to the room here. The boss said that the number this time is the last four digits of this store's phone number. But the phone number is written right there on the sign on the roof. We already called this phone number. Uh, 555-3750 is uh, the four-digit code. Well, 3750 is the code right now. Anybody can see it from South Ashfield Street. Is that really okay? Yeah, it's fine. Works out. If you look here at the state of the bar, there is blood all over the back wall. You can see each of these places, this jazz poster that's been broken. Um, each of these places are places that Walter killed a victim. And we can see kind of the aftermath, even if it's an exaggerated aftermath of what happened after Walter killed them. And the bartender here was one of Walter's victims. Um, let me look up that name again. Eric Walsh. Eric Walsh. Ouch! Damn it! <laughs> Dark Fantasy. Where the hell am I? Dark Fantasy, thank you for the six months in a row. Roses are red, violets are blue. I'd rather be playing Silent Hill 2. <laughs> yeah, me too, but I've already played through Silent Hill 2. I haven't done a proper, super in-depth Silent Hill 4 playthrough in a while, so... I Even though this one is not, like, my favorite, I still like this game, and I still like going through it like this. But thank you so much for the resub, Fantasy. Much appreciated. billiards table. Looks like they were in the middle of a game. None of this stuff is relevant now, but it'll be part of a puzzle we'll need to solve when we revisit this place. Uh, yeah. Let's just go back to the room. Let's heal up. Let's do inventory. I need to take a break as well. Oh, don't worry about it, MTX. Definitely take care of yourself. Put yourself first. Don't ever feel like you're obligated to sub or support in any other way other than what you're capable of. 
Um, for a lot of people, you know, just by being here, following the channel, hanging out, and being a part of this, that's all the support I can ask for. Seriously. Thank you. It means a lot to me just that you guys are here and spending the time on the channel and enjoying this, enjoying the stream, you know? All right. Let's put this stuff up. Got into Portis head, by the way. Nice. Good. More people need to get into Portishead. Let's put some more bullets away. Uh, we'll put the sword away. We'll keep that for later. I figure out of all the ghosts, we'll probably pin Andrew. We'll definitely pin Andrew. Maybe Cynthia. Maybe Richard. Put the shovel away. Golf club bat. I'm about to pick up the axe, so I'm just going to put all these melee weapons up. 28 bullets. Plus another. Yeah. Uh, let's put one of those stacks up. Got three of those. Andrew's head. Can I get an Andrew's head fallen by the window before I go on break? Maybe? Huh? What do you think Silent Hill 4? Ah, well. Police arrested on Mr. Suguru nope, Suguru Murakoshi, the game's writer, naked and urinating on the utility pole again. Mr. Murakoshi. Is this why you're not? I don't know. Oh, Eileen's not there. Leave us with Eileen, please. She's not there. I can leave you with Robbie. Would that be okay? Do you feel all right with that? Hey, Frank. Hi, Frank. You just going to pace back and forth in front of the apartment? You're not helping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not Hank. Frank. Frank Sunderland. James Sunderland's father. No one else can see the hand marks. Alright, I got that stuff put away. There's nothing else in there. Perfect. I think that's everything to check on. We're healed up, inventory sorted, save it. And as said, I'm going to take a short break here. Just need a few minutes, going to go run to the restroom, get myself a drink, maybe grab a cough drop because my throat is starting to get to me again. Uh, stretch my legs a bit. I've been sitting for... A little over five hours now. Usually I try to take a break sooner than this, so. Definitely need one here. But I will be back in just a few moments. All right. Give me a second here. Uh, Dat Boy from Texas. 
cheered 350 bits while I was on break. <laughs> Thank you for the 350 bits. Much appreciated, Dat Boy. Hope you're doing all right tonight, weathering the storm. What's up, Bude? There was a nubs here. He's gone now. I'm back. Here. Yep, the break this screen uh, that I was using there. Uh, End of Small Sanctuary is the name of the song. It's from Silent Hill 3. And Eternal Enigma with the 21 bit bit -criments. The 21 bit -criments. You're it, Enigma. The last of the 21 bitcrements. Just a little longer now. Actually, a lot longer now. We got a lot of Silent Hill 4 left. Let's go. Let's go. Put the song back on. Mm, later, when I take another break. <clears throat> or maybe I'll use the Dancing Chicken one, which has a different song. It has the result screen music from Silent Hill 1 instead. Hello? Can I pick this up? The Rusty Axe. A one-handed axe, a little short, but powerful and easy to handle. Again, this is one of my votes for best weapon in the game all around. It's really good damage. It's fairly fast on its swing. It charges up relatively quick. And you're invincible on this entire animation. So it's pretty crazy for basically just tanking through any attack in the game. And then counterattacking with a really good, quick, one-handed axe attack. Stuart Harper with the 50 bits. Cheer, I know it's not a lot. First time cheering. Just thought I'd show you some love. Thank you. Every little... <laughs> every little bit... That's fucking stupid, I'm sorry. Everything counts. It all adds up. Seriously. And everything helps greatly. Um, means I don't have to do so much on the so much actual work. It means I can stream more and be able to support myself easier and do more of this. It all it all counts towards it. So thank you so much. The stairway is collapsed. It doesn't look like I could get through. Rip bit puns. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sure some of you are so frustrated with me that... You'll file a complaint. You were going to do it? Do what? I'm going to go check on my friend Richard Braintree because he's screaming. He sounds like he's in trouble. There's also a ghost chasing me, so don't want to deal with that. Do I have a Japanese copy of Silent Hill 2 for the Xbox? I don't. That's a very specific question. Uh, no, I don't. I just have the... U.S. release, Silent Hill 2 for Xbox. What's this? 
It's door number 207 from my apartment building. So, once again, we find another plate on the door. I'm guessing uh, Richard is not going to be doing so well on the other side of the door. And this is the chaos placard, again, representing that element in Walter's ritual. And, of course, Richard Braintree would be chaos. Makes sense. Gotta admit, that scene disturbed me quite a bit. First time I played this game. Like, now I've seen it... I don't know how many hundreds of times, and... It's comical to me now, like, it's funny. It's become funny because I'm just so used to... How weird he sounds and moves at certain points. Walter's there. He's pointing at room 303, Eileen's room. And he's over there in Braintree's apartment. Who just died. His hand, yeah, his manimal paw. It's... It's not the best. They didn't do so good rendering, making it just that one finger, but you know. It's a game from 2004. Looks like another one, Captain. I don't know, I still kind of expect better from... One, two, one on his head. Team silent, you know. It's just like that case from ten years ago. Yeah, that Walter Sullivan case. But Sullivan's dead. They even got the body. Must be some crazy copycat. Yeah, but even so... Yeah, but even so... I wonder who that is doing those voices going on in the apartment below what do your elf eyes see I can see the guy in the top left there just kind of standing around oh yeah and there's somebody moving in there too can't quite tell what they're doing Oh, it's the kids, like, jumping around on the couch. Oh, yeah, there's somebody down there. Tossing and turning. Just laying in bed.
PS1 hand. Voyeurism. Yep. The game. In fact... She's getting dressed up all fancy. Just wait till we uh, take the time and unlock those New Game Plus outfits. Definitely going to make a day of that sometime. Not too distant future. Robbie. Robbie's still there, just hanging out. And now the news. Yesterday, Wally the, Wally walrus, the walrus again. A longtime resident of the Springfield Zoo gave birth to a healthy baby walrus pup named Buttercup. Okay. It sucks we've heard all these so many times now. Frank. Of course, there's another handprint. There's only two now. Richard Braintree was victim number 19. So only victims number 20 and victims number 21 for the 21 sacraments remain. Spoilers, Frank is not one of them. Is he going to do something? No, he's just going to stand around. Be weird. He's a Sunderland. That's what he does. This hole. It doesn't look like a human made it. It's getting bigger and rounder. I think I've seen this pattern before. He's starting to actually recognize, since he's seen it at uh, each of these places, uh, marked on several of the doors and on the, um, the cult uh, pages and, and ritual information and stuff. Let's go. This hole was made for me. Classic uh, Junji Ito comic. Worst day your apartment has ever seen. Again, we're not actually in Henry's apartment. We're in Walter's mental creation of it. I like that the floor is graded and you can see the lower floors below you as well. Well... We're going into all of them. So let's start with this one. Wow. Look at all these porno magazines. Yep. Yep. 
There's a diary here. The last few months, Joseph, the guy next door to me who gave me that rare porn magazine, that good rare porn, looks like he's been working super hard. Yeah. He said if he found another rare one, he'd give it to me, but he hasn't shown his face around much lately. He said he was a journalist, and he's always investigating stuff. What the fuck was Joseph into? But I think something strange is going on with him. He's been shut in his apartment, and I can hear all these weird noises coming from there. July 1st, Mike. So at this point, Joseph had become trapped in the apartment, and the neighbors were starting to notice the weird sounds and things happening with 302. Caused by Walter. Do you think the idea of traveling through the holes also stemmed from the graffiti uh, from Silent Hill 2? It's possible, and people have referenced that before, especially since there is a connection between Walter Sullivan going to Silent Hill and killing Billy and Miriam Locaine and sort of connecting all of these places uh, where he killed his victims together. Keep in mind, Billy and Miriam don't appear as a ghost, and we also don't go to a world that represents where they were when they were killed, which would have essentially been that part of Silent Hill 2, presumably with that local paper. Um, so some fans have theorized that the intention was that the whole travel mechanic was more or less used there for Walter to go to Silent Hill when killing Billy and Miriam. And when he was done with this, um, the hole was gone. So there in Silent Hill 2, a hole would have been that is gone now, but that would also imply a lot of strange timeline stuff with Silent Hill 2 and 4. As said, it, it gets to be a very confusing theory. And, I don't know, it's an interesting connection, but it's hard to tell if anything like that was intentional or if it was just kind of a similar theme. So we've got the rest of the diary here by Mike. Oh, my beautiful Rachel. What's with the note on the red paper? I thought you'd written a note back to me, but I guess maybe it was somewhere else. He took it, along with my clothes. Those were my best clothes. Not your best clothes. July 2nd, Mike. So something happened to Mike. Someone took his clothes, and that someone happened to be Richard Braintree. We'll find out a little bit more about that as we examine each of the apartments. We're also going to be collecting a bunch of things. Red paper, uh, which we can put underneath our own door and then go back to the apartment and pick up and read. Because picking up a note in-game and reading it would be too easy. Porno magazines everywhere. There's no time for that right now. There's always time. <laughs> What's up, our car? I'm doing pretty good. Now, what, what, what will Mike wear to church? I'm not sure he's a church going bell. Maybe. There's a magazine lying open. Teaching Despair, Wish House. Okay, so this article is also found in Brookhaven in Silent Hill 3. Um, and there was a, a change from the article the way that it appears in Silent Hill 3, it was this same exact thing word for word, except for what they call the orphanage. Uh, in 3, they called it the Hope House, but this was changed because it turns out there's an actual organization called Hope House that deals with orphans uh, that's based, I believe, in the Ukraine and uh, works with, like, finding homes for orphans and things. 
And I guess they didn't want to be associated with like the actual organization that deals with real orphans. So uh, probably out of respect for them, they changed the name of it for Silent Hill 4 to Wish House. So here we have Wish House, an orphanage on the outskirts of Silent Hill. But behind its false image is a place where children are kidnapped and brainwashed. So this is the article that Joseph Schrieber published that went uh, public and essentially exposed Silent Hill's cult to the rest of the world and showed everybody that it, it existed and kind of what they were doing out there. It was no longer a locals only type. No one really knows hush hush thing anymore. What's up, Mercurius? Talking about the Billy and Miriam as not victim's ghost, them being the two-header large-armed monster. So is Joseph the other large-armed weird monster? The ones that you see, like, later on? Uh, they're in the Brady Games Guide, they're referred to as bottoms. Um, Joseph is just the upside-down ghost in 302. I don't think he's represented in any of the particular creatures. Wish House is managed by the Silent Hill Smile Support Society, a charity organization sometimes called 4S. It's true that 4S is a well-respected charity that takes in poor children without homes and raises them with hope. But at its heart, it is a heathen organization that teaches its own warped dogma in lieu of good religious values. Mr. Smith, temp, who lives near Wish House, had this to say, Sometimes at night I can hear their weird prayers and the sounds of children crying. I went there to complain one time, but they ran me right out. Since then, it hasn't changed a bit. In fact, this reporter was refused admission when he attempted to take photographs in the facility. What exactly do the folks of Wish House have to hide? During my investigations, I was able to discover, however, a suspicious-looking round concrete tower which appears to be part of their facilities. <clears throat> Excuse me. Unfortunately, no one was willing to tell us what the tower was used for, but it seemed unlikely that it has anything to do with the business of raising orphans. It may in fact be a prison or a secret place of worship. The cult religion that operates Wish House is known by the locals simply as the Order. It's a religion that is deeply interwoven with Silent Hill's history, but its worshippers' fervent belief that they are among the elite chosen people has a dark and dangerous side. I intend to continue my investigation of Wish House, uh, Wish House and the cult behind it. I've always believed that <clears throat> telling the whole truth and showing the children the true path is our most important duty. Joseph Schrieber. So eventually we will meet with and talk to Joseph. Or at least what remains of Joseph. We've got a photo of a nurse. It says, I love you on it. There's a key taped to the back of it. So, locker key number 106. Hang on to that. And it's got something to do with a nurse. And this picture here of this nurse is actually going to be a nurse that we somewhat already know. Um, Laura in Silent Hill 2 mentions her and Mary having a nurse named Rachel uh, and this nurse who is here uh, is named Rachel although it's spelled differently that could just be a you know mistake but uh, considering this is where Frank Sunderland lives and works one could assume that at some point James also, uh, James and Mary, lived here as well. And one could presume that uh, if Mary would have been ill, she would have gone to the local hospital, which is St. Jerome's, which is where this nurse works. So I believe that is supposed to be Mary's nurse, Mary and Laura's nurse, Rachel, despite the misspelling of the name. <clears throat> even the uh, nurse's uniform <clears throat> excuse me
even the nurse's uniform that you find in Rachel's apartment is the Silent Hill 2 uh, enemy nurse uniform. This guy, is it the super? He was much younger in this picture. There's a key taped to the back of it. Oops. Um... I think my keyboard might be given up. One second. Yeah, rip keyboard. There we go. I've got a wired one that I can swap it out for if it starts uh, giving me any more trouble. All right, so we got Frank's key. Superintendent's key says 105 on it. So we can take that to apartment number 105. Hello. Now we've got a bunch of ghosts to deal with while also trying to explore each room. <clears throat> Some several dogs that are already dead, to be noted. And young Walter there knocking on room 302's door. Only to vanish when we approach. Again, we can collect some red paper and s slip it under 302's door, which is actually going to be necessary uh, to progress in a little bit. Eileen's door is locked. What was that guy doing here? Could he be the next victim? Or could it be... Hmm. Could it be what? So all of these are locked, but we can get the superintendent's key. We've got the key to his room. And hey! Hey there, Walter. <laughs> Good for you, Johnny. I'm proud of you. All right, let's talk to Walter. He's got some interesting things to say here. I got this from Miss Galvin. A long long time ago. She was younger than me back then. She looked so happy, holding her mother's hand. Here. I'll give it to you. So we're going to take the shabby doll. This is an entirely optional item to pick up. Uh, picking it up and putting it away in your apartment triggers a specific haunting that occurs. So we're going to take this. She was so young then. So happy with life. Just holding on to her mother's hand. She was so young then. Alright, that's all he's got to say. Life. Just holding on to her mother's hand. <coughs> He's a ghost. He has no no hitbox. He's creating this whole world. That's just a projection that he's made to represent him. We see the true Walter at the end of the game. There are keys for each apartment here, so we're in Frank's apartment right now. Frank Sunderland's. Just take those. Q 
key to each apartment in the building. Actually, it looks like 303, Eileen's apartment uh, key is missing. Oh my god, there goes my fucking keyboard again. I think this thing is broken. Okay. Give me a second and let me swap this out. Okay. Should be good now. It said change the battery. I already swapped the battery the first time and then because I thought it was just a dead battery uh, or a dying battery, I put a fresh one in and then it just died on me again with a fresh battery in it, so... I think that keyboard is just fucked. That's fine. That's why I got my wired one. Got a piece of red paper. Another thing to put up underneath, underneath the door. Several red papers. Hastily scribbled memo found by Nurse Rachel. Return it to room 302. Together with the part her boyfriend, Mike, tore off. So this is a note left behind by Frank about this note and a part that was torn off. Um, and Frank assumes that Mike is Rachel's boyfriend. Mike is actually stalking Rachel, as we'll soon find out. Okay. Okay. It's a red box. Man, this thing really stinks. It's practically bringing tears to my eyes. I don't know, Bude. I never really take a whole lot of the stats and things to heart. There's so many factors and various things can just be because I've gotten more significant hosts this time around than the last couple nights, or who knows what. I don't even look at viewer accounts during streams anyway. It's not until after streams that I even see if there's any kind of trend of how many people are watching what. Got Frank's diary. The red box seems even stranger today. Thing that really stinks. It's giving off a terrible smell. It's disgusting, but I just can't throw it away. It must have been around 30 years ago. That young couple was living in the apartment, but one day they just suddenly disappeared. So this is a little bit of that information on Walter's parents. Barely anything. Ran off just like thieves in the night. I don't know why. It must have been money troubles, or maybe they got themselves into some kind of danger. Frank doesn't know. We never really get more detail. Problem came after that. They left their newborn baby when they took off. I even found the umbilical cord. I called the, umbil uh, the ambulance, the umbilical yance, right away, and I heard the baby survived, but I don't know what happened to him. Although a few years later, I often saw a young kid hanging around the apartment. One day he just stopped coming by, but now that I think of it, I'll bet he was that abandoned baby. It's a horrible story, abandoning a newborn baby. That all happened in room 302, and the umbilical cord I found there, well, I still can't get myself to throw it away. Frank is such a weird guy. And that's what's in that box that stinks so bad. Walter's umbilical cord. And as weird as Frank might be, and as creepy as it is that he's kept, like, he, j he just kept this thing in a box all this time, it winds up being one of the only things that allows us to be able to stop Walter. If only we could just pick, pick it up right now.
And yeah, the poll, by the way, should still be open uh, to determine what ending I'm going to be going for in this game. Um, let me go ahead and go dump off some inventory here. But um, if you want to get some votes in, the next area after this is going to be the halfway point. Once I uh, reunite with Eileen in the hospital and um, the escort mission begins, that is where you can start influencing the endings. That's when the hauntings begin in the apartment, and that's when how well you take care of Eileen will affect how well she does at the end of the game. So once I get to that point, whichever ending is ahead is the ending that I'll be going for. <clears throat> Give up typing. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good, Johnny. Y'all are right about the Silent Hill 4 OST being good, by the way. Never noticed it. Yeah, Silent Hill 4's soundtrack is really solid. It's really, really good. Uh, especially considering... Um, how much influence uh, Joe Ramersa got to have in a lot of the songwriting. Um, as well as Akira Yamaoka and his kind of classic Silent Hill style at this point is still really well represented. Hey, Flannel. That can't be good. What up, Felix? What the hell is this? The dryer sprayed blood all over the place. Ever listen to the Japanese Silent Hill 4 second disc soundtrack with the traditional drama? I've listened to, like, part of it, but I've, no, like, not sat down and listened to all of that. I should at some point. Yeah, my dryer was murdered. Well, we've got a lot of notes to read. It was four years ago that they discovered the body with 1221 carved into it. Right away I had this terrible feeling and couldn't stop shaking. The victim had been murdered six months earlier, but Walter had been dead for seven years, having committed suicide three years before the murder. The police think it's a copycat crime and are calling it the Sullivan case round two, but something about it bothered me. May 14th. So they were assuming it was a copycat case, because, and rightfully so, because Walter was already dead, but obviously they didn't realize, you know, crazy Silent Hill ritual magic that would allow Walter to continue existing and doing all this crazy shit. What's up, Batsy? We're nearing the halfway point of the game. We're about 45% through the game, I'd say, at this point. Lost the key to Eileen Galvin's room. I've got to find it and bring it back. Let me think. The last place I saw it was... It's ripped here and I can't read the rest. There's red paper stuck in here. I figured out the riddle behind the numbers. 01121 is actually 1 of 21. In other words, 1 out of 21. So Walter was planning on killing 21 people, but he never finished the job. He was convicted for the murders of Billy and Miriam Locaine, the seventh and eighth victims. Afterwards, he committed suicide in his jail cell. The grisly mass murder of ten people shocked the world and came to be known as the Walter Sullivan case. There are two big puzzles here. 
The first is, what was the motive for the murders? The second is, why did he kill himself before completing his task? Was he simply insane? May 2nd. So they didn't realize at this point yet that Walter's suicide was part of the overall ritual, one of the sacrifices. Did Walter let himself get caught? It doesn't seem like it, because he wouldn't necessarily benefit from being in prison. But then again, once he has the powers of Silent Hill, essentially, after completing the, the first ten uh, hearts part of the ritual and killing himself, um, once he's able to kind of do whatever, he's able to move his body around and... Um, start affecting things like room 302 and the rest of the apartments here. So it's like, it wouldn't have really mattered to him either way. But it doesn't help him in any way either. The powers of South Ashfield. No, it's the powers of Silent. I mean, it's their rituals and stuff that cause this. It's just that he's focusing that power here in Ashfield. I picked up the key that Eileen from room 303 must have dropped. I thought I'd return it, but she wasn't home. I guess I'll give it to the super. May 20th. Oh, hey. Just checking in on us, I guess. Good guy, Walter. Seems happy. No new handprint yet. So Henry has Silent Hill powers while not being in Silent Hill. Henry doesn't have powers. You mean Walter? Yes. Walter has Silent Hill powers while not being in Silent Hill. He killed ten people and himself to complete the first part of a ritual that is from the cult of Silent Hill, the Order. That he was raised his whole life to perform that he believes will reunite him with his mother. Looks like Eileen is still okay. But yeah, by performing that first portion of the of the ritual, it it essentially gives him the power of Silent Hill and he's focusing that power here. Sick peephole. It's pretty good. Eileen never noticed. Okay. That does the same animation. I'm curious if I do, like, more stuff back in the apartment and then come back around... If she'll do some different animations. See if Walter just comes back again. Hey, Umbreon. Played this with a friend when it came out and loved it. We got through it in a day. Memories. Uh, yeah, I can actually remember doing the same thing. Uh, with a friend of mine. Was really excited when this game came out. and Sat and... Played it pretty much an entire weekend, essentially. Uh, trying to get each of the endings. All right. Ah! 
She never noticed apart from the time she stared right at it. I mean, yeah. But she doesn't, like, actually... I don't know. She doesn't actively uh, seem to do anything about it. You would think she would. But again, it's hard to tell if she's even uh, really seeing it or what. Nothing there. Keep hoping we might get her lucky uh, Andrew DeSalvo head floating past the window. Still got a Robbie head floating out there. Hey, Snarky Jane. Two ghosts in this game that freak me out in the game are the creepy long hair girl and the rewind fast forward ghost. Uh, Cynthia and Richard Braintree, yeah. Two of my favorite ghosts in this as well. I like Jasper also. Gurgling on chocolate milk and set on fire. It's pretty neat. I wish some of the other ghosts were as unique. Because some of them I honestly have like a hard time telling apart. check some of these apartments on the way back down. Hey, another reused prop from Silent Hill 3. These Dalmatian statues. You find them um, shortly before you examine the bathtub that takes you to the other world. Um, like where you encounter Vincent. In Silent Hill 3. Nothing to say. Yeah, the long-haired ghost was Cynthia. Is Cynthia. Can you pick it up? Thank you. Might as well try and stock up on some things here. There's a lot of supplies that are worth checking out the uh, apartment rooms. Not to mention there is some more world building type stuff. It's not really related lore, but um, there's all these other little subplots going on with the other tenants in the apartment. Like, there's a there's a crazy guy who shot another woman's cat and uh, Mike the stalker stalking Rachel and her boyfriend the painter and uh, like all this other stuff that you find out about that doesn't really have any bearing on anything. It's just to kind of build. As I said, kind of world building. Make it seem like actual individual people lived here in the apartments and kind of had all their own shit going on on top of all the weird supernatural stuff. Plenty of cooking tools, but there's nothing I need right now. Nothing. Let me go ahead and finish just checking this side. Hello. Oh, come on, pick it up. It's a can of bug spray. 
interesting weapon. Um, there are hummers, like the insect enemies, that this is pretty good against. Uh, but it also has kind of an interesting effect on ghosts. It stuns them momentarily, and they kind of make, like, a weird noise. Bloodstained shirt, torn red paper in the pocket. Let's grab that. And let's get out of here before taking too much proximity damage. Eileen's fighting bees outside everyone's apartments. So here we go. This is Rachel's boyfriend's apartment. Um, when we get to Rachel's apartment, there's a notepad with a phone number on it. When you dial it, it will make a sound like you'll hear this phone ringing from everywhere in the apartment. It will always sound like it's right next to you. And you basically have to search around to try to find which room the phone is actually in. It's 202. A painting of one of the tenants. He listens to great music, but I feel sorry for him having to live under Braintree. A painting of a young man. So this is the guy who lives in 107. He listens to great music. So this is the audio file. I think this is one of the guys you can see dancing around on one of the lower floors. Obviously, he's in 107. I think that puts him underneath Braintree. I think Braintree's 307. It's a painting of two adults and a lot of children. Memo says 206. How can that... Uh, how can they even sleep with so many noisy kids? Besides that, they have to live next to Braintree. Painting of a man holding a brush. Memo says 202, self-portrait. So, the artist himself. Whatever. It's a painting of a nurse. So, Rachel. On the memo it says 106. My beautiful darling. Lately, she's been bothered by a stalker. This is Mike. Who Frank Sunderland wrote about in that note. And assumed was her boyfriend. Painting of a plump woman. Memo says 204. She's always eating something. But I wish my girlfriend liked to cook like her. Painting of an old couple. Memo says 304. A nice sweet old couple. Woman holding a cat. Memo says 102. She loves cats too much and missed her chance to get married. Kind of felt sorry for her while she was mourning for one of her dead cats. So the dead cat can actually become one of the hauntings in your own apartment. And it was another tenant here who was responsible for the death of that cat that we'll find out about when we get to their apartment. So like I said, there's all these other things kind of going on that aren't really related to any of the major plot, but it's just kind of interesting information. Painting of a man drinking alcohol. Memo says, 203. He's so noisy, I wish he would... Oops. Uh, so noisy, I wish he would stop all that drinking and fighting. This must be Richard Braintree. Memo says, 207. Braintree, that prick. He always uh, He's always yelling at kids. Especially that weird one that hangs around, Walter. But he took Mike into his apartment and peeled his skin off. So he's my hero. So it's a strange way of phrasing that. Uh, he didn't peel Mike's skin off. That's pretty exaggerated. But he did beat the shit out of Mike and take all of his clothes. Painting of a man with a gun. Memo says 101. A gun maniac. He's always coughing from his cat allergy. This must be the superintendent. Memo says 105. Sunderland. 
the superintendent. The super mistakenly thought that Mike was Rachel's lover. So that's where we confirm that. Painting of a man holding a porno magazine. Memo says 301. That perverted stalker. He got what he deserved, so that's Mike. Must be the guy who plays video games. That's us. That's me. The memo says 205. He's always shut in his room. Looks like he has lots of weird interests. I heard he tape recorded Mike getting beaten up by Richard. And when we get to their apartment, we can get that cassette and bring it back to our apartment and play it in our own stereo. Nothing. Just some world building. A lot of world building here. Double check. There's nothing else to pick. Nope. That's it. Who the hell plays video games? Nerds. What? How did that? How did that hit? Oh, Grandma. No, thank you. I will spray you with bug spray right in the face. That was some bullshit. Checked everything here. Got this floor. Again, we're starting to run out of inventory again. Already picked up a lot of stuff. Damn it. A lot of old game machines and other devices that I have no idea about. So this is the gamer's room. Cassette should be here. There it is. There's a cassette type. Uh, cassette tape. Label says skinned mic. I can listen to it on the stereo in my room. A lot of old video game machines laying around. God, I hate these stupid ghosts. I wish so bad that I could. Uh, Explore a little more freely without having to deal with these These friggin ghosts Because there's just not really any good way to deal with them Outside of the silver bullet Which you again you only get two of Let's put this under some stuff away, go listen to the cassette. Hard mode bullshit. This game doesn't even need to be on hard mode for bullshit. This game likes to just be bullshit. We're not even to the bullshit part of this game yet. We're still in, like, the fun part where you don't have to worry about escorting anything, anyone through repetitive areas you've already been through with even more aggro enemies and angry ghosts that you can't really deal with. Is Shabby Doll? Yes, it is. It is in the chest. 
Still need to go use the locker key. That'll get rid of that. Um, as funny as that is to use, I'm going to put that away for now just to clear up inventory. I'm not really taking the time to fight anything here with bullets, so I'm going to put that away. I'll hang on to the gun just for emergency, but... Let's listen to this. How do you like that, you sick little freak? You had it coming to you. These clothes are disgusting. Get them out of my sight. I know. It'll be perfect to wrap this body in. Hold it. You! Hold right. Think you snooping around again? Myself. Get your ass out Hold of here before it. you Hold really it. piss me Hold off! Hold it. Hold it. I think I'll keep that one for myself. Hold it. I think I'll keep that one for myself. So we hear kind of part of the commotion of Mike, the stalker, getting his ass beat and his clothes taken um, by Richard Braintree, while one of the apartment tenants, the one who drinks, uh, opts to take some of Mike's clothes after this incident. Um, we also hear Richard Braintree mention it'll be fine to wrap his body in. He's referring to the body of the dead cat that was mentioned in the painter's description of uh, the cat lady tenant. Let's put the cassette away. Now that we've heard it, that's all we need. Let's check on Eileen again. I can't see her. I wonder if something happened to Eileen. So now that we've progressed and checked more of the rooms, Eileen is no longer uh, actually there. Can't see her anyway. Which is strange, to say the least. Anything significant? They're all still kind of doing the same things. Got another red paper. So bloody it's hard to read. Rachel, love you. Always watching window. Protect you with love, Mike. All right. Mike's creepy stalker love letter. He's got nothing on uh, Stanley Coleman, though. Walter going to stand there and smile again. Great. <laughs> What's up, uh, Otaku? Let's see. I know at a later point there are some notes that pop up in here that are pretty easy to miss. Alright, those haven't cropped up yet. Right, and I still have not picked up that red paper yet. There's a particular red paper that when you pick it up and put it underneath the door, come back around and read it, it spawns a key in your bedroom. Third floor is done. Second floor, east side is done. 
need to do the rest of the rooms on second floor west. And then first floor. When all is said and done, I really love this game. Nah, not that controversial. See, the thing is, this game is very divided. Uh, there's a lot of people that love it. There's a lot of people that don't. And, um... I don't know. For me, it's the weakest of the Team Silent games, for sure. But it's not a bad game by any stretch. There's frustrating parts of it that I wish were better. But as far as, like, the, the overall game itself, uh, it's, it's still a great game. It's a baby bed. Hey, Blod. New mic? Yes, sir. Got a whole new audio setup, actually. Everything running through a mixer and a little more proper setup. Things were kind of ghetto rigged for a little bit. Looks like kids' graffiti. The writing is so jammed together, it makes me feel sick. So this is the apartment we keep seeing from looking out the window. Uh, a couple of kids usually jumping around. That we can see from the window. This is that apartment. Sounds deeper than usual. Well, my voice has been strained the last couple days, so... It's been a little bit raspier and deeper. Um, but then I've also got different settings. New mic and different settings <clears throat> on the mixer itself. So, yeah. Okay. The silent stomp. dogs. Ooh. Okay, great. Oh, hey, Walter. So this is what you're doing when I can see you from my window when I'm back in my own apartment. Like that, he's gone. We look out the window. I can see Eileen Galvin from here. I'm pretty sure that's room 303. What's she doing in this world? Uh oh. We've seen this happen. This is the gun Richard was using. Richard's revolver, a much better gun, holds a maximum of six bullets, easy to use with moderate stopping power. It's only so much ammo throughout the, the playthrough that you can pick up for it, but it's a good gun. There's men's bloody underwear and a torn shirt sleeve in the garbage. So there's Mike's skin clothes. You can see he got the crap eaten out of him by Richard Braintree. And his some of his clothes and stuff are still there in the trash can. Let's see anything else here in Richard's place? Oh, sure enough. A golf club. The putter.
nothing here. Bloody underwear. Someone ate spicy food. Exactly. The worst fate of all. Chipotle. Cheap hit. Stop. Okay, so that's everything on floor two. Let's go to floor one. Can open up the locker that's down here. This is Rachel's locker. I love you, Rachel. Mike. It's filled with love letters from Mike to Rachel. So he was a serious stalker. He was he was hassling Rachel quite a bit. Based on everything we've seen. Alright, let's do this side. Try not to take damage. Oh, here we go. This is Rachel's apartment. So, take this portable medical kit for sure. And you can see the nurse's uniform here is the enemy nurse uniform from Silent Hill 2. The name on it says Rachel. So all of this, despite the name being spelled incorrectly or differently as it appears in Silent Hill 2, I believe this nurse is... Way too heavily implied to most likely be uh, that it is most likely the same Nurse Rachel who cared for Mary and Laura. It says my darling's number. And there are some numbers that look like a phone number. There's a phone ringing somewhere. And it's just going to keep ringing. Until we go back to the painter's... The painter's room. Ah. Great. And Steve Garland's here. This is the audio files room. Turntable record collection. Items. Any lore? Ow! Garland! Garland! No! Okay, I gotta get out of here. I've gotta get out of here. I gotta go back to the room. Go heal up. Hey, Alvaro. Luckily, we still we are still healing in the room for a little bit longer. We're almost at the point of the game where we're going to lose that benefit. Hey, Ty. Just keep stocking medical supplies while we can. One of those, three of those. That's nice. Got 52 regular handgun bullets now. Collection of melee weapons I'm not going to use. Got uh, the Magnum. Let's just run that for a little bit. Plus the melee weapons. Put the golf club up. Still got a few more doors to open. Why limited inventory? Yeah, I know. 
strange design choices. They wanted things to be different. They wanted things to be different from every other Silent Hill before. So, this is how they did different. Hey, looks like Eileen is back. We couldn't see her for a little bit. Seems like she's okay. On our way to playing a full game of golf. No, nope. just gonna pace back and forth. Great. <laughs> and Walter just coming up and smiling. All right. So nothing too new happening here. Side's done. We got one more side here. That don't open. Go ahead and get you out of the way. I guess I could go answer the phone. Take this. Vampire Noms, thank you for the 45 bits. Uh. Oh, I missed him. Can you kill? Nope, the ghosts are not killable. You can pin them with a sword, uh, of which there are a limited number of swords. Uh, but they cannot be killed. The cordless fluorescence giving off an eerie glow. Nothing in here. was weird. Aren't there two more ghosts than swords? Uh, it's more than that, I think. Because there's five total swords, I believe, that you can pick up. And there's... Jimmy Stone, Cynthia, Jasper, um, Braintree, DeSalvo, Garland. Archibald. There's a lot more ghosts than there is swords. It's more than two. It smells terrible. Open it up.
Will someone pick up the phone? No. This is what happens. It's wrapped up in these torn, bloody jeans. It's the body of a dead cat. There's a torn red paper in one of these pockets. So that's the one that's necessary. This is the dead cat belonging to the uh, the cat owner. It was killed by one of the other tenants. I believe that's this tenant's room, in fact. Yep. The gun nut who shot and killed the cat. It's a model gun. It's totally useless as a weapon. Ah, oh, damn it. I wanted to look around, but Garland, of course, is going to not let me have the time. So, all the guns here are just models, and specifically, all the guns here uh, are from Silent Hill 2 uh, and Silent Hill 3. The chainsaw, the Uzi... Rifle, shotgun, but none of them are, uh, usable. None of them are real. And back here, there's a little bit more on this kind of, like, world building going on between these, uh, apartment tenants. Nothing but books about guns, but one of these magazines has something written on the back cover. My eyes and skin are so itchy. That stupid cat next door made my allergy go crazy. I was so pissed off I took my converted model gun and blasted away at the thing. At point blank range, it was way cool. The thing just dropped like a stone. By the way, that revolver that Richard in 207 carries, it's the real thing. That guy's dangerous. So he had a cat allergy. And that's why he shot the neighbor's cat. Why we find the body of a dead cat wrapped in the clothes. So it's like all these things kind of coming together. All these different little incidents happening between the tenants. So let's go to 202. Pick up the phone. There's no one there. Yeah, because we press the numbers. All right. And now there's more ghosts around anyway. Like, both of them just showed up here. this under the door. Uh, know that you're not in the part of the game yet, but second time apartment after Eileen leaves. If you go into a room where there's a ghost, the ghost eventually falls to the ground without you even attacking him. What does that mean? I'm not even familiar with what exactly that is. Or if it necessarily has it has a particular meaning, I would have to see it. But that's not something I'm familiar with, and I it could just be like a glitch or a messed up mechanic, not necessarily something intentional. I'd have to see it to see if it seems intentional, you know. Unless I'm just, like, not understanding what you're describing. Second time apartment. After Eileen leaves, you can go into a room where there's a ghost. The ghost eventually falls to the ground. After Eileen leaves, 
Second time apartment. I'm trying to remember which ghosts you even encounter. There's ghosts in a couple of the rooms when you're examining the uh, Walter's father things and opening up the area to Frank Sunderland's room. But again, I don't know if there's some particular significance behind it. As said, it's not something I ever particularly, like, noticed. 